live that's right praise thanks so much brother we are live tonight it's evolution beatdown so we are we're looking forward to this we're going to be taking on every single one of the evolutionist best evidence for their philosophy because that's all they have is imagination and philosophy uh, we've got a list of um, evidence that they use that we're going to beat down, as, as the title suggests. If anybody in the chat or any anybody um, has another line of evidence that pops into their head, let us know and we will um, demolish that because Raw Matt knows uh, when you see the comment sections in, in some of these debates, for example, um, let's say the modern day debates, especially the last one we just did against Adam Heap, it's like the arguments that they use for one most of the times are already debunked directly in the debate. So clearly they had their fingers in the ears. Two, we've debunked it in other videos or in our book or just in other debates. So they recycle the same old arguments, right? Uh, but yeah, today we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna beat them down. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to you guys for a second if you wanna say a few things. Sure, we'll, we'll just go around. We'll just go around. So I guess Jason, you're up. <laughs> I haven't really got, I haven't got anything prepared. I was just getting prepared and lying down. Sorry, mate. You're, you're up. like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, why don't we? Well, Matt, do you um, do you concur with what I'm saying? I mean, don't you just get a good laugh over the arguments or objections that you see in these comment sections? And the thing is. These evolutionists think that we got all the time in the world to have a, an all day long comment war. No, that's usually why we agree to have discussions, debates, and videos like this, because we'd rather corner the evolutionists live for all to see, right? Where they can't wiggle themselves out or go on Google or something like that. 
Yeah, it's just it gets kind of redundant. You know, they'll, they'll spend all day in a comment section when really they can just go to our work and find the answer or know what we're going to say. Or or I mean, I don't know why they have the 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 feeling that they're just going to monopolize all of our time with something that we've already answered and they just don't care what our answer is. It's kind of pointless, you know, uh, they just know they know that their side didn't do good. So they have to go to the comment section and save them. That's really all it comes down to. I mean, it's really, really basic. I mean, I'm not going to get in some tirade because like you said, it, it'll waste your entire day. I don't spend any time in the comment section anymore. You might see a comment. I'll leave, you know, I'll go in there like once a week or something and leave a comment, but that's it. I'm gone. I, I'm not going to even, I don't even respond to anything anymore. It's just over. I even turn comments off on my channel. There's no time for that, man. It's like with the uh, nested hierarchies, right? How modes of transportation fit that nested hierarchical pattern. And then they'll try and point to, like, I know in our debate with Adam and he Adam Heap, right? He said, well, I mean, I had an uncle who, I mean, I'm just kind of paraphrasing. I had an uncle who had a, bi a bicycle who, um, you know, took an engine and, and put it on, on the bicycle. And apparently that, you know, breaks the hierarchy that is formed in, in designed modes of, of transportation. But that's just a ridiculous argument. For one, bicycles are not naturally designed and built that way. You know, he had to uh, do that himself. Secondly, directly in, in the video that I made, I pointed out the fact that we can point to so many inconsistencies in their, you know, so-called phylogenetic tree of life, right? I mean, convergent evolution, Anytime they invoke convergent evolution, they're literally doing it because they've discovered an inconsistency in their, um, you know, in, in their in their evolutionary trees or loss of traits. For example, Adam Heap said that to you on the snakes because you pointed out that the uh, the oldest snake that's been discovered in the fossil record has no has no legs. Actually, can you touch on that one? Because that was a great point. Because then Adam Heap had to say, uh, and he's a herpetologist by the way, former zoologist. He had to say a uh, resort to loss of traits evolution, which, which is an, another rescue device employed when there's an inconsistency in their hierarchy. Uh, yeah, he specifically uh, agreed to it, which what makes sense because it's actually not the oldest snake. It's the four oldest snakes that they have. So they have the if you look in the chain, you would expect to see what evolution says happened is that if legs are actually a weak trait, that they would slowly be lost from the lizard. Right. But that's actually the opposite of what they see. They, they, they see an immediate loss, like no legs at all from the four oldest varieties of snake in their geologic column. And then all of a sudden they have a snake that appears that has some remnant back leg things that they actually found the snake was uh, using to actually grab a hold of something or swim with. And then the. And then another snake is just a different variety might have some like uh, a variety of legs and then they disappear again. Right. So their uh, fossil record is the opposite of what I was telling them you need it to be. So if the evidence goes against what your story says, then that's actually a failed prediction in itself. And it doesn't show that they came from blizzards at all. And he was like, yeah, but legs are, are weak in the genetic area, you know, just more, more story. Or guesswork. Well, I see is loss, non-stop loss. Every everywhere you look, like giant turtles, giant wolves, giant everything. Everything was bigger, smarter, stronger in the past. Everything, and and uh, even people, humans. Humans were bigger, smarter, stronger in the past. It's like they they keep they, they don't do it anymore because they're wise to it. But for a long, long time, uh, like for about a year and a half when I first started, they'd always give me evidence of things that have had lost, like legs and different parts of their body and, and and different features anatomical features that they'd lost and i'd say well how's that evidence of evolution you need stuff to be gained and that so they're the only evidence that that i've ever been presented from them because i've always asked for them to show me evidence of evolution with some gain or something and they can't do it none of them there isn't one citation out there in the seventy thousand citations of something like that i think seventy thousand plus or less or more i don't know but there's a lot somewhere around about that mark and they can't find one citation that shows one fact of evolution you can't show one fact of creation either um but the, 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 like we always say the data does fit creation better than evolution you have to really stretch your imagination out to you know get around it
Well, they, they agree that plants are better when you go back in time. They're called heirloom plants. But yet when you tell them that happens in animals, they go, no, 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 that, no way. No way. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's amazing, too, because you'll point out, and I noticed it in your discussion with Erica, and well, pretty much every discussion that you have with these evolutionists, they'll point to their so-called best examples of beneficial mutations. And then you'll point out how that example was due to a loss of some kind, loss of information, oh, loss of specificity, or, you know, but, um, pointing out its deleterious effects. And yet they'll say, well, don't you know that that's how evolution proceeds? You know, it's <laughs> more context dependent. They'll say it's, it's bad in one environment, but it's good in, in this, you know, particular situation. Like with Lenski's bacteria, for example, it's like those bacteria are degenerate. There's loss in, in functional information. You put those bacteria back out in the wild, they'll be dead on arrival. And, um, and that's the point. You know, I don't even worry about um, asking them for any examples of mutations that add information because they can give you one or two. One or two for one or, is not going to counterbalance the information loss due to all the deleterious mutations that, that are building up in, in our genome. Yeah. And that's why I always say it comes down to net gain versus net loss. Yeah, you've increased fitness in a narrow sense, but fitness, the best definition of fitness is total functionality. Total functionality, information is down. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to yeah. bounce off. I mean, uh, bounce off what you guys are talking about with real evolution, if I may. Just give me like one minute to show some people real quick. Of course. Yeah. Oh, of sweet course. sizzle sauce. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys are going to like this. You guys see that? So, uh, one thing that. Uh, now. You guys see that? Yes, I can see that. So one thing that burns me up as well, evolution, and what they purport is that somehow um, a dog-like ancestor um, added on mutations and they could change, and somehow um, it, it morphed into a whale. So, I mean, here I want to bring some points up that uh, kind of make that absurd. Number one, the hair from a mammal would have to change into blubber and eventually into a marine-compatible skin. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, number two, breathing apparatus must change. That's ridiculous. Number three, an ex external ears would have to disappear and change into high pressure diving. And we're talking, this is high technology for that. Even our submarines, I mean, our, yeah, our submarines have this type of technology. Each of traits would require at least one structural protein. Each protein would necess necessitate 300 letters of DNA, genetic blueprint, and the proper sequence. I mean, come on, this is so much information that needs to be added. It's ridiculous. Lactation systems must be designed. The eyes have to evolve protection. Um, so that this thinks to itself, evolution, and, and you know, oh, I, there it's going to happen, you know. It's a mindless process, so how does that work? The hearing must be altered. The feeding mechanisms have to change terrestrial to aquatic. Its nostrils would have to move from the top of its head and form a blowhole. And that's that's even more absurd than anything. I mean, that's just magic. It would have to develop a dorsal fin by accident. <laughs> its bony tail would have to change into a uh, cartil. What even the hell that cartil phalanges fluke? Um, its body would have to increase eighty thousand pounds. This is this is mythology. This is storytelling stuff, and they're they're and they're the ones accusing us. Of believing in, um, you know, fantasy and fairy tales. This is a fairy tale. The will would have to be involved in two entirely different evolutionary events to have echo echolocation ability when run when one's absurd enough. Fifty thousand other major changes must take place. The probability this happened is likened to a blindfolded toddler. Typing oh, several quick, pages quick. of meaning. Looks like there's a lot of feedback coming from Jason's end, and we just want to make sure everybody can hear what you're saying. Jason, can you mute, mute yourself real quick, brother? That that's really bad. I, I'm sorry about that. I don't. What yeah. The hell is that happening? Here? Are you like is in a factory or something? <laughs> 
<laughs> is, hey, do you have a group of people vacuuming and cleaning? cleaning your house right now? No, no. There's, no, there's no vacuum, no nothing. No, the house is quiet. I'm living in the middle of 300 acres, and everything's dead. Right. Because, uh, 300 acres. Like, We're coming over to party. I, I, didn't uh, well, from. I, I didn't realize that was coming from my end. I could hear that as well. That's okay, brother. But my recommendation for whoever's not talking, just um, yeah, mute. Yeah. Everybody else be muted. Is it? Is oh, it sounds good cool now, right? Sounds good, brother. So, my main point okay, of this cool. is, I mean, after you've seen the absurdities, I mean, you, you're not going to hear this from evolutionists. They're going to be. They're going to have a zipped up lips because if you brought, if they knew this, they knew they would know their system. Uh, I mean, their their belief system would be in big trouble. Um, the probability this happening is like into a blindfolded toddler typing several pages of meaning paragraphs in a completed book. There you go. That's you want, you want to talk about credulity and faith. There you go. I just wanted to show people. I thought that was impressive. It's impressive faith for to believe in such a thing called evolution. So I'll I'll, I'll relieve to whoever wants to talk next. Sure. Um, if you have to, if you wanted to think about biologically what has to happen uh, as well in, internally for something like a, a land mammal to turn into an aquatic animal, every single gene function that's going on would have to change. Not considering the uh, highly constrained HOX gene, which is the morphology gene, but that's the gene that determines how you're going to look. So um, I, I can't even imagine that not only would that gene have to completely convert for some aquatic life to form or mutate it it would also have to change the gene functions themselves like completely that's just insane if you think how many how many genes actually exist in a whale and between i mean obviously we don't have one of those uh mammals that turned into a whale anymore that's gone uh arthriocetus i think it is uh but we know how many genes are in a whale <laughs> we're talking Thousands and thousands of genes would have to convert over. That just seems absolutely absurd. What that's what deep time does, right? You can just throw well, just throw in a couple million years, and of course that can happen. So but that's supposed to happen now in eight to ten million years. All of that. Did you know that? Did you know that that the the latest thing is from the geological column and everything? And I got this from watching Northwest Creation and and all these other different show, channels. Um, that it's been reduced down now to about eight to ten million years. So that that little that little rat sized or dog sized rat would have had to have turned into a whale um, in about ten million years, which is really pathetic. Exactly, and it's just like um, well, both Praise and, and Matt were uh, pointing out the amount of changes. You know, the amount of necessary changes in that small amount of um, time that you just pointed out, Jason, you literally have to, um, I've got a list here from, um, Dr. Jonathan Wells. He goes over all the many complex adaptations that would have to arise to convert this tiny little land mammal, like you were saying, Jason, to a fully aquatic whale. Um, just to name a couple, there'd have to be the modification of the eye for underwater vision, um, emergence of, of the of the blowhole with musculature and nerve control, the reduction of hind limbs, of course, modification of the teeth. Uh, major one, the forelimbs would have to be transformed into flippers. Uh, changes to the hydrodynamic properties of the skin. A, a major one, reorganization of the musculature for the reproductive organs. Uh, what about a, a change in the birthing process, right? Where the fetus is delivered in a breached position for labor underwater that's necessary for the um, for the whales. Or what about the origin of tail flukes and, and its, you know, associated musculature? So, and I could go on and on and on. You, you touched on the blubber, the origin of blubber for temperature insulation. Bill Morgan touched on that one um, tonight. So look at all the novel traits Novel, the novel anatomical features, the novel information that's re required in just uh, how many millions of years did you say, Jason? Um, eight to ten million years. It's down to now. I mean, I can't remember what it was before, but it's 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 it's. I remember seeing a scientist, um, like a well respected one, giving a lecture at some creation um, expo, 
uh, thing, and he said that it's down. He said that it's down to about eight, ten million years <laughs> for all of those changes. And then, yep. even if you actually focus on the specifics of the whale evolution, whether it's you know Ambulocetus, Pachycetus, <laughs> Basilosaurus, I mean, you could literally go through. Um, every single one of them, Rhodocetus, uh, one by one, and, and refute them. Pachycetus, I think it was way back in the day, I think they had it drawn and illustrated like um, an aquatic mammal. And then now, you yeah. know, it's just a tiny yeah. little land mammal. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they? I think Jonathan yeah. Wells, I think he reduced the time he found, I think they've been researched. He it's mentioned it's down to 4 million years or something. And uh, so it's not your hundred million years. Like, so deep time is not even going to save evolutionists on this. And when you see an animal like it's a majestic animal like that, we know that's from a creator. I'm sorry. It's, that's not an argument from personal credulity. Um, that's just <clears throat> plain uh, recognition of reality. I'm sorry. I mean, that's just the way it is. And, and calling it science, though, is what really bothers me. They can believe it, capital B, or they can imagine it, capital I. But calling it science, that's contradictory and inconsistent to everything we know in science. <laughs> Especially, I mean, look at Lenski's experiment. Um, yeah. How many generations, Matt, have been observed? Let's say, uh, let's break it down to human generations. 109,000 plus, and they're up to two point something million years. If you go by 20, uh, if you go by 20 years per generation, they're up to about 2.1 or 2.3 million years equivalent of human evolution. Amazing. Yeah. It's there's 10 generations per day. It's been going for over 30 years. You can work it out yourself how many generations. And what have so we learned? To find out when it started, and then just work out 10 generations of the type of a cola I he's using it, it 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 goes through 10 generations every 24 hours so you can basically go on google when the thing started and just work out how many days and work out the exact yeah generations so, so it's funny so you know after this many observed generations of lenski's bacteria what have we learned bacteria produce more bacteria but not just more bacteria they produce more degenerate bacteria and reductive evolution is a very known phenomena in in bacteria and they're losing genes short term um, but it's long-term degeneration right they're adapting for the short term for their environment but they're doing it by throwing out so much functional information which is why as a whole um i think it's 12 maybe 12 uh, i don't have it in front of me 12 populations that, uh, that lenski is yeah. looking at and they've all shrank in functional genome size yeah that's really going to take your bacteria like no, organism into a whale some of them can't even move. Is that right? Standing? The back, I think, the back I, wheel, I, mean. I, I think, um, yeah, I, I think because of all the genes that have been lost and, and all the genes and information that's been thrown out just for, just for short-term adaptation, just to adapt in such a narrow sense, you know, while the total functionality goes down, um, it's, it's only going to get worse and worse. And I love when they say, oh, bacteria, you know, that debunks genetic entropy, the thesis of genetic entropy. No, we see genetic degeneration in bacteria as well. We see it in all forms of life. Some of them can't even move. They're just laying there waiting to be fed every day and then sort of just but they're getting so bad. I, I heard that about some of the populations somewhere. I can't remember where I heard that, but I'm pretty sure it's true. And, I mean, if, if they're getting that bad that they're getting that, hobbled with oh man with that many terrible mutations and throwing away their genome like that then it just makes me um, gobsmacked how evolutionists think that's evidence for evolution right yeah and, and certain people like richard dawkins matt and i put together a video um you know because in his in his book, The Greatest Show on Earth, it's called, he talks a great deal about Lenski's bacteria and how it's demonstrating evolution, large scale, ponds come to people evolution right before our eyes. <laughs> like you pointed out, uh, no, we've, um, we, we've actually seen genetic degeneration, loss of regulation, mutations, uh, just loss of information um, in general. But of course, the evolution is just going to say that's how evolution works. It's context dependent, but yet they can't point you to a truly beneficial mutation that's that's in no way, shape, or form deleterious. They're all reductive. They're all deleterious. 
or as uh, Raw Matt always points out, they're just general adaptation, right? Non-random epigenetic changes, for example. Um, yeah. And then those happen quickly. So those happen too quickly um, for the millions of years of evolution, you know, that it should take for species and that types of adaptation. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Well, man was man was supposedly was, was like two point um, one million years ago, weren't we? Weren't we supposed to be like more like an ape than a human? And yet they've had equivalent of over two million years of human evolution and the equivalent of in generation times and they're they're not only still bacteria they're just really sick really weak really you know disabled and sick bacteria if you put them out into the general pop they'd be just they'd be, they'd be annihilated well think about humans and chimpanzees right yeah chimpanzees only live half as long as humans so if they split from us uh 6.5 to 7 million years ago they've actually had twice the chance of evolution that humans have had if you take that into account wow <laughs> yeah this 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 everywhere you look everywhere you look that sort of thing it's 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 everywhere that all you see is lost and in every single paper we read, that's why the evolutionists used to always give. They used to always say, "Well, give me a citation, and any citation you pick it, any one you want, and just give it to me." And 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 they stopped doing that after a while because I just go through the citation and point out all the way through it where this they is say Terry Pig data, it, right? But I want to I want to kind of uh, bounce off that point too. Is viruses mutation rates are crazy? I mean, they just yeah. mutate, 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 and it's just. I mean, nothing ever comes out of viruses. They're the same damn thing. In fact, there's been viruses that have been extinct. Um, so if anything, yeah, they go downwards. He's losing, he's losing uh, fitness. They, I heard on the news somewhere that, that they, the scientists said that coronavirus is already losing fitness, but it doesn't mean it's going to save everybody, but it's already going downhill. Well, it's like when I was debating emotionally stunted emoticon, and he wanted an example of uh you know something other than humans or something other than um an animal that's domesticated of evolution of, of genetic entropy and i said okay well we can look at viruses because like praise you know pointed out um, they experience high generation times and high mutation rates therefore if we're going to see if genetic entropy is true long term let's look at it at a human virus and yet we know from the H1N1 uh, virus, it went from a red hot pandemic. We know that everyone's talking about it today and comparing it to the uh, coronavirus to literally a whimper to an extinction event in 90 years. And evolutionists, they'll attack this data that I'm about to say, but they, they cannot explain why the H1N1 virus went extinct in humans. And yet uh, we can see that it was due to mutation accumulation. It was literally due to genetic entropy. And it makes it makes sense. That's the perfect um, thing to look at to see if, if you know, gen how true genetic entropy could be long term. And boom, viruses go extinct. High mutation rate, lots of generations. Yeah. The AIDS virus is getting weaker too. It's losing. I can't remember. I've got it written down somewhere. I can look it up later and, and post it. But in the chat, but the, the AIDS virus is, is getting weaker because it's actually throwing away uh, proteins and all sorts of things, and it's it's actually becoming less efficient. And that is why they're being able to suppress it with the drugs. That, that's one of the reasons. Not the drug, drugs have got better, but also the AIDS virus is, is going downhill. I don't know if you, you, know, you probably know more about that than me. Somewhere oh, yeah. There. Yeah, great point. Well, even just viruses in general, it's so funny. Like in my in my debate with Mark Drysdale, he it was funny because before we went live, he said, "You know what, Standing, I'm in a bad mood tonight, so I'm going to be asking you some tough tough questions." So his first question had to do with viruses, and I showed him why viruses in general, the existence of viruses actually fits far better in a biblical based model than it does in, uh, you know, their evolutionary model and, and position. And everything viruses now. Um, is, is supports our position. And, you know, you get people like James Downard, they'll say like, oh, creationists aren't up on the data and things like this, which is, it's actually quite the opposite. Because you'll debate yeah. these evolutionists and you'll point out the fact that like endogenous retroviruses or the ALUs or other classes of these retrotransposons uh, have function. 
you know, and then you'll ask them, are you aware of, of all these crucial functions that these uh, classes of retrotransposons have? And they'll oftentimes say, no, no. And, and they'll even, you know, scoff at it. And then you'll show them the, the, the technical papers or the sources that show just how functional these DNA elements are. But it's like, you're looking to ERVs as one of your so-called best evidence for evolution, but then you're not even up to date on the literature regarding endogenous retroviruses? Yeah, yeah it, it's endogenous retroviruses is something that the evolutionists love and they love it simply because of the, uh, the that they know nobody can comprehend it or understand it or 99.9% .9 of people out there just go cross-eyed when they start talking about it. And that's why they love to get into conversations about it because they know no matter how badly they do, as long as they can throw out a few big words here and there, that their their, their brainwashed idiotic um, evolutionist friends are all going to be on there claiming how they just they slaughtered the creationist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's crazy. And then yeah, go ahead, Matt. It's crazy because they've actually tested the mutation rates of these different things, and uh, they've tested HIV because they wanted to track back its origins. And guess what? They they now have a number. They said HIV has only existed for 220 generations. That's it. Wow. Very, very generations. Who, who's generate? Oh, human generations. Yeah, human generations. So if you give, let's say, 20 years, that's uh, 20 times 2,400 years. Yeah. How, how many? Yeah. Okay, so 220, 400 years. So it's only been around for 400 years. Uh, well, 20 years times 220, that would be what? Uh, uh, four. Oh, I'm not good math, unless i got a calculator. <laughs> I think 4,400, but I could be wrong. 20 times okay, 200. To the flood. So basically, round about. It's close yeah, right around the flood. Oh, wow. Yeah, so 4,400 the... years. That's right at the flood. Wow. That's. That's. That's and that's the evolution of saying that is that. But what yeah. about right? fossils themselves? Yeah, like, I haven't heard a, an adequate explanation from evolutionists how things fossilize. I mean, come on, we there's a bunch of dead bones everywhere, chicken bones. Every, I mean, and you don't see them in no fossil layer. They don't fossilize, and so it has well, some type you. of um, you know dirt, silt, or something that fossilizes these things. So our, our model is um way better it's it's um yeah i think it supersedes their actually a big time it's actually empirical let me ask you praise how many animals do you think died just today one well, day on this planet oh my gosh Brilliant. how many fossilized Who's like maybe one, one. maybe one, <laughs> one, one, one. Exactly. one just like jason said none none because yeah, the thing none. is environmental factors are going to prevent those billions yep. of dead organisms um from fossilizing but according to our model if it's covered by sediment and then protected as we would um say based on the global flood model then the, the fossilization process can start which means we can explain the existence of not just one fossil not just 10 fossil <laughs> fossils but billions of fossils great point praise well have you seen that that um that there was a fish you need the you need the chemicals the the right uh the right right uh, minerals and that in the mud as well I mean, have you seen like a, there's a, a, a when I argue with evolutionists, they always a lot of them say hey of guys. Them about, about how uh, about how um time. hey man how's sorry? it going? sorry sorry bro sorry man Tony my good man how you doing bro hey what's up guys being safe out there being as safe as we can <laughs> yeah I hear you <laughs> being safe means debunking evolution and abiogenesis <laughs> yeah Keep our mind off of what's really going on out there yeah hey man man yeah it's pretty bad i'll finish your thoughts there jason sorry man yeah go ahead lost track. I lost track i'm tired i had heaps of coffee earlier to wake up and whenever i have coffee my memory turns to mush and that's one <laughs> thing i've been always seen if I ever, you know, like, you know, if I'm going to prepare for a bait, say, the debate in a day or two, then I'm going to make sure that I'm well rested and I don't have coffee and stuff like that so my memory isn't, yeah, mud. It's terrible. I don't know why it does that. 
You know, another thing too, back to the ERV is Matt, we were talking about it the other day because um, a, a big problem that they have is understanding that a lot of the evidence they use, whether it's the so-called, you know, mosaics, uh, which they like to say are transitional forms or the evidence in homology or um, the, the evidence in, you know, the nested hierarchical patterns that they look to. Um, they'll say, because we'll point out that these endogenous retroviruses are functional, which is proof that they're functional DNA elements created you know, at the start by God. And um, they'll say, well, no, no, it's, uh, th this is a common argument from emotionally stunted emoticon. You know, it's, it's the hierarchical distribution of them. You know, we have more ERVs in similar locations with the chimp than we do with the monkeys than we do with the dogs. And we'll point out that our model too expects the exact same thing. I mean, we don't even have to get technical. Of course, um, we would agree that we're going to have more similarities anatomically, morphologically, and genetically with a chimp than we will with a monkey or than we will with a fish. And of yeah. course, more than we will with a bacteria. We expect these groups within group patterns, of course. You can see that in modes of transportation. All sedans are incredibly similar, right? Mm -hmm. Sedans are more similar to each other than they are to SUVs. But then sedans are more similar to SUVs than they are with boats and airplanes. It's the exact same thing, a nested hierarchical pattern. But then we got to look at the distinguishing evidence. And Matt, you, you noticed that we, in the last debate, we looked to DNA barcoding. We looked to, um, you know, why chromosome dissimilarity between chimps and humans, DNA function. And these are the parts that they struggle with because these are the lines of evidence that actually demonstrate our position. Hey, Stanley, can I say something? I know you're I, just to get off topic, but um, you got Luca in your chat. I know he wants to debate me. Uh, he's got he's got no evidence for abiogenesis. He's been really on me for a few weeks now. I have no problem debating him. But uh, he, I mean, I don't know where he's going with this. If you look at what he's saying in, in the chat, uh, I don't know. I mean, we can debate abiogenesis. We can get into the RNA world, whatever he wants to do. Bottom line, it's not leading to anything. So, um, no, no, there, yeah, there's, um, it'd be an interesting debate and discussion to be had since he seems, um, determined to, yeah, show how he, valid he, it is or something. But I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, like you point out, there's no evidence for it, right? So, I don't, I don't really know where he's going with this, but, uh, I mean, I can get into all the points. It would take me about, about a half an hour to go through all the origin of life experiments, and I could do that. I could also bring in PhD biochemist Fuzz Rana, and he could point out all the problems and all the, you know, strict protocols and conditions that they're using that have no relevance to, you know, natural chemistry. What's funny is most um, evolutionists that I talk to, to be honest with you, and I think Raw Mac can vouch for this. We've had lots of like discussions with them. You'll yeah. bring up the abiogenesis problems, and they even recognize that it's. For one, it's impossible to defend because there's absolutely yeah. no um, right. validity to it. And they'll oftentimes just say, okay, you can have that first life, right? They just want to give it to you because they yeah. know it's impossible to defend. And then they just want to get to um, evolution. It's, it's very, it's a rare case where you get an evolutionist who's actually willing to defend um, such absurdity. I, I, I will admit I can't prove God, and I admit that's a belief. I can't prove that. The atheist will not admit abiogenesis is a belief. They will try to push it off as scientific. They will push it to other planets. It happens somewhere else. That's not science. That's a wild assumption with no real chemistry backing it. Amen, brother. Amen. They want to hijack science. Yep. They want to hijack the word science and say what they believe is science. And that's why I love when, uh, you know, Hoven, he'll bring up chemical evolution in, in, in his debates. Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? They'll say it's not part of evolution. And Hoven right. will say, well, then why is it in an evolution textbook? Get sure. it out. I've got the textbooks. It's right here. Get it out. Yeah, they're in every textbook. That, that was also a great video the other day with Raw Matt, man. Want to uh, give him a shout out. Good job, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Best out there. I think he's the best for sure. Yeah, you guys are good, man. Speaking the truth, exposing this nonsense. Shalom, well, you know, it's, it's, hey, Gavin, how you doing? 
Good it's man, like you man. pointed out, brother Tony. It's the thing that bothers us the most is is how they they hijack science. You know, yeah. like all these T things. Did you uh, yesterday or the day before with T Jump? I'm sure you you because I think you read uh, the question to him where he was saying that you don't have to show abiogenesis under prebiotic chemistry. I mean, I was just I was I mean that's crazy. Okay, so where would you show it, man? Where where is it yeah. ever going to be shown? Yeah. I mean, if you don't, if it doesn't have to be shown in a lab and you don't have to show it in nature, where are you going to show it in your backyard? It's like, they have no, where are they going with this? You get all the best scientists on earth with the, with the best lab that, that money can possibly buy. Right. Spend all the, all the money on earth. Right. right. Get hundreds and hundreds of all the top echelon, very, very tippy top scientists in all the world. And yep. you can put them in a lab with, with, with. All of the chemicals they need, but not just like base elements. Like we'll even give them proteins and all sorts of things, right? Right, and, right. And, and they still will not be able to put, uh, with, even with everything there that they need, every chemical, every protein. Everything. Every single nucleic acid, every carbohydrate. And every, activate every it. Lipid, every, yep. Everything. You give them everything and 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 all the best minds in the world in 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 a, in, a, in a pure gold lab with all the best equipment that that all the money on earth can buy and they still couldn't make one single very very simple virus or cell from I scratch totally right. agree that's what i'm telling your guy luca in the chat i'm saying you can have all the activated nucleotides you want you can have all the purified reagents everything that nature by the way can't produce so I'm going to give you all that stuff and the proteins. You can have it all. Produce this primitive cell. No one can do it. Mate, mate, what about each chemical, each chemical molecule in that chain needs a certain temperature, needs the catalyst, the catalyst, the catalyst, the, the reaction to be started at the right time, to be stopped at the right time, because if it keeps going, it'll just completely destroy and go back right. to square one. It needs right. it needs all these different chemicals with all of these different temperatures and, and to be stopped and started at exactly the right times and then to be mixed with each other at exactly the right time. See, they know how complicated it is, so that's why they say, oh, it was an RNA virus that was first. But a virus needs a host to survive yeah. and, and yeah. to replicate. And, and and so so how did the virus survive and replicate without a host and, and so yeah. on and so on? They've got no answers for any of it. It's just like it's like the Big Bang. It's like they, they appeal... That's the one thing that makes me laugh. Stephen Hawking's rescue device is the is the is quantum mechanics. Well, quantum mechanics you can't see, touch, taste, smell, yeah, hear them, uh, feel them. They've got no weight, nothing, nothing, and and yeah, yet, and, and they're completely invisible. They're completely whatever, and yet they believe in this invisible yeah. force that 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 created the universe by popping a magic dot into existence that expanded billions of times faster than the speed of light, and then all of this blah 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 with all the chemical all the Oh, okay. We got Luca. We got Luca here. Go ahead, Luca. You got you got all your examples for abiogenesis. Let's hear one, man. Show me okay. one. Okay. Yeah. You okay. Well, real quick, I, I want to thank Luca for for joining us. I don't want to be thank like a lot of you the atheist channel. Yep. I don't, I don't want to be like some of the atheist channels where they all just gang up on the one. No, no. Let them talk. Yeah. Okay. So, Luca, you, you can, oh, man. Uh, I'll let him talk. Yeah. Go ahead, Luca. Thanks for joining us, man. Okay, you can listen to me. Yeah. Go for it, mate. I cannot show ab abiogenesis. It's happening a real uh, a long time ago. Right. Yeah. Great answer. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, a pleasure to be here. Wow. So did, yeah, well, God happened a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, Luca. What would you say is the most um, like? Are they advancing in, in the in, in abiogenesis? What would be the best evidence um, that you could present? Let's say somebody like Tony that abiogenesis is at least plausible. And you can take your time. That's the best evidence I've heard. No. Uh... Go ahead, buddy. I'm listening. Uh, you've been you've been calling me out for weeks now, and you basically your answer is pretty vague. It just must have happened a long time ago. That's not science, pal. We're waiting for the big grand example here, like Richard Dawkins. You know, he's got okay, all the evidence. Uh, 
Ok, l- yeah. the best okay. one, uh, there are two um, main experiments now. Uh, one, it's... Uh, Let him gather his thought. You, you wanna you wanna write some stuff down before you start? I mean, I don't know where you're going with this, man. Luca, you there? I think we lost them. Standing? It's hard sometimes when you get on live. I'm some problem with my um, my internet. I'm uh, uh, when I'm speaking, uh, you are listening me uh, after a while. It's uh, quite a problem for me. Are you oh, saying there's, uh, there's a lag? Yes, I'm. Uh, I have a lot of lag. A lot of lag. Hmm. Not. Um... Maybe it's if you use your computer audio or computer mic, would that work a little bit better? Yeah. Like, can you, are we coming in through when you can? Can you hear our audio at least when we talk? So I'm guessing it's taking you a while, Luca, to hear what we're saying. It's very delayed. I, I saw that happen on my computer today. There was a bit of a, a lag. And and yeah, so it keeps getting it like like about thirty seconds later, sort of thing. I think. Well, I'm not too sure how to fix that. I mean, Luca, if you want to try and fix it in the meantime, maybe we'll toss it over to Tony to just to. Uh, I uh, I appreciate Luca yes, for coming I can in. Hear much you. Much, uh, much respect, Luca. Thanks for coming in and uh, chatting with us. I just, uh, like I said, I, I really don't know where you're going with your arguments. You've been uh, texting me uh, or in the chat and writing me on YouTube. Um, your argument basically was you can't show abiogenesis, but it happened a long time ago. Okay, I try. Go ahead, man. That is gone. okay. So we're gonna get past that now. Um, so I offered Emo if he wants to come on in and give his best argument for an abiogenesis or even another one. So, um, yeah. So we can, we can either go back to our our discussion or we could uh, talk about an abiogenesis. It's up to you guys. Whatever you guys oh, want, man. I, you know that that guy's been he's been calling me out for a while, but I guess his opening statement was we don't we can't show abiogenesis, but it happened a long time ago. Did I hear that right? Yeah, yeah. But he, he was, he was what he was trying to what what was happening was it was coming through. He was getting a lag of about ten to thirty seconds. Okay. So whatever yeah. he was taking ten to thirty seconds to come through, and then he'd start to get his talking and get his thing through and then okay. someone else would say something and then it comes through another 10 seconds later i'm pretty sure that's what was happening to him and that's why he was getting messed up but maybe he's fixed it by logging back in now. okay now you can hear me yep yeah you can hear oh, okay. oh that was good, good. uh i was telling you uh, there are some uh experiment now uh one for sure is uh, to try to um um to obtain a cell with the less uh, genetic information as possible there are uh, um, taking away some uh, uh, material genes and uh, they are trying to uh, know how can a cell uh, can live with a few uh, genetic information rna or, or dna there is a this uh, uh, kind of uh, experiment to know how can uh, uh, a cell can live with uh, uh, less and less uh, things in it. Uh, 
Another uh, uh, example is uh, for sure uh, the mm, there are actually uh, creating uh, artificial cell. So there are taking some uh, DNA, RNA uh, pieces, uh, some structure they are, uh, that they are not alive uh, as they go on, and they put it together to create life. And they, uh, they, they are, uh, sus there are, okay with this, they are creating life Luca, as of now. Okay. Can I, ask, can I ask you something, Luca? Mm -hmm. Find the yeah. exact experiments you're talking about. Be specific, number one. Number two, Okay. they are using most likely, I'm very skeptical, but I'm probably going to guarantee you they're using pre-existing parts from donor cells. When you say... Uh, I'm uh, telling you that they are, but yeah, uh, I'm also telling you that there are experiments you uh, are asking sure. me what are the best example okay sure. there are doing experiment and the, there are uh, two uh, ex major experiment going on the first is there are uh, trying to uh, have a simple cell there are, you have a normally uh, Living cell. Sorry, um, it's English. You, uh, it's not uh, my uh, yeah, first I language. What, um, Le, yes. what 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 experiment are you referring to? Because there's the RNA world, Jack Showstick. There's Craig Venter who copied a pre-existing genome under very controlled conditions, and he inserted it into another pre-existing cell membrane. So, what experiment are you talking about specifically? Uh, it's not a RNA word uh, for artificial cell. There are a lot of experiments going on uh, right now. Uh, okay. Sorry, I just uh, get up uh, to from my bed, so uh, okay. I, I did I, research. Uh, okay, I, I mean now. this. I yeah, I mean this respectfully, but that's not abiogenesis. That's genetic engineering. That's intelligent chemists going into the lab under very, very highly controlled conditions and copying genetic information from other cells. That's not they're life not from non-life. They're uh, not copying it. They're taking it from other parts. They're taking DNA from one cell and then putting it inside the skin of, a, of an empty, emptied out cell type thing and then building it from bits and pieces of, of already working genetic material. That's what they're doing. It's not evolution. It's not proving anything at all. They, they can't even make a simple protein, let alone, you know, a, a cell. They're not making a cell. They've got artificial cells, like artificial wall, cell walls and that. But one thing I just want to tell you quickly, Luca, and I will shut up after this, there's, there's 40,000 different lipids identified in a cell wall. Now, there's one, there's one lipid layer, there's a carbohydrate layer, and then there's another lipid layer. And like I said, the 40,000, that's only the ones they know about. The 40,000. Then the carbohydrates are so complex that they make lipids look like a, ch a child scratching on a piece of paper. They're so unbelievably complex that the carbohydrates even make DNA look, 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 look easy, look like a child scratch. There is so much complexity. There is so many, there's millions of them or hundreds of thousands or millions of, the ca of, of, of carbo different carbohydrates. Now, how do you get 40,000 different lipids plus plus um, millions of different carbohydrates. Then you've got cells. Then you've got, then you've got uh, 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 proteins running all the way through each of these walls, and they're allowing they're allowing uh, any chemicals in and waste out. And and you've got all these machines, and then you've got these microtubule machines. They build these highways, and then they break the highways down after they build them because if they left these little strands up all through the cell, the cell will become brittle, brittle and break. And it's just, you just go on and on and on and on with the, with the amount of the, – the, the, that's just the skin, mate. That's not including the DNA and all the, all, the, all the machines inside and, you know, the RNA and everything. The complexity is so unbelievably mind-blowing. That is why Richard Dawkins said that it is and, – and I've got the video on my channel of him saying this. It's conceivable – that an, an, at some alien race seeded Earth, that, that this alien race um, evolved by some inexplicable Darwinian mean somehow. 
And 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 that's how that's how bad it is. That people like Richard mm. Dawkins will even admit that life is just so complex that they this it, it's it, the complexity would absolutely blow. If you blew a cell up to the size of a city, it would be more complex than a city. When you go in with all the complex, all the layers, all the machines, all the thing, mate, what they're doing is they're just taking bits and pieces mm -hmm. of already existing life and then adding it in. And now I'll shut up. Okay. Le, mm. I'm uh, um, I have a bachelor in chemistry. Okay, uh, some oh, of you, know, you know, ever yeah. ever been uh, in a lab? Uh, I'm asking you because a uh, uh, moment. Been uh, when uh, I was uh, graduating, okay, I was working in uh, the lab of my university, and uh, I I was creating uh, a polymer. Uh, I was uh, working in um, thermoelectric. Uh, Luca, uh, in, uh, Luca, did yeah, you just hear what you said? You said you were creating a polymer. Let me ask you a yeah. question. Did that, but did you're that polymer... That James Tua's work, right? You know James Sorry? Tua, right? James yeah. Tua? Yeah. You know... The, 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 uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I know James Tua. Uh, can, no, uh, can I finish my... Yeah, let him talk. Jason, let, let him talk. Yeah. 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 When I was creating this polymer, what do you think was I was doing? Because uh, uh, when you say uh, intelligent chemist that create something, what do you think a chemist do in a lab? They okay, use so very, they use very highly controlled. They use very controlled conditions that have no relevance to natural chemistry. And Lee Cronin just debated. You say so, uh, but yes, it's not. Exactly. Yes, it is. Yeah, because yes, you have it to... is. I was creating this polymer. Yeah, uh, you, you know what uh, thermoelectricity uh, is. What is this field of uh, sure. chemistry? Okay, what the uh, what I was doing? Uh, it was uh, organic, because there are two fields, main field in thermoelectricity. What do you think I was doing? in the, the lab oh, man, making what? what what tell us yeah okay i was doing this polymer and uh, the um, reason to do that uh, for me it was to test it but okay. uh, it was a polymer to uh, transform it in uh, uh, electricity okay well a polymer okay. doesn't uh, towards uh, life you oh, mean, uh, uh, it, it, i mean it, 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 uh, i I'm trying to uh, take down a point. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a very complex polymer. Okay. And I was mixing only three th things to do it. It was not uh, so uh, complicated as we think. It, it was not uh, impossible to have it in nature. Okay. Okay. Chemists but are very smart. Yeah. You can. Uh, have a lot of ways to okay, obtain yeah. what you want. Okay, but, but don't think that there is uh, intelligence as you uh, imagine. Okay, you can have a, a reaction. Yeah, you can have nature. you can have you can have a controlled reaction, and a polymer number one is not leading towards proteins. And what you created it has nothing to do with it. It was not a protein. Okay, right. I know it wasn't a protein, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. Richard Clemens who's a top origin of life researcher, and I have the paper. I've sent you the link a couple times. You didn't want to read it, but he's a top origin of life chemist in Germany. He admits openly that he uses highly controlled conditions that have, that have no relevance to natural chemistry anywhere in the universe. He uses purified reagents. He uses sterile test tubes. He copies genetic information from other cells. He admits this. And he is an origin of life chemist. So if he's if he's a top researcher saying, hey, I'm using borrowed parts from other cells, I'm cheating. He's he's openly admitting this. But uh, you, what do you think? You, uh, do you need to know? To, uh, impossible. Oh, sorry. Lee Cronin and, and, and look him up. I think you might know who he is. Um, Lee Cronin admits that 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 abiogenesis is unfalsifiable. It's not really science. It's just they just got to work things. Why out it's not uh, falsifiable? I you, think you know uh, there is. I've got I've got the video of him actually saying that. 
and he's one of the top evolutionists in the world. Right, and he's all. You know what else he says, which is hilarious. He says he doesn't know what life is, but he's going to design it in his lab and use no design. <laughs> well, yeah. but what the, I trying to say to you? It's in a lab. It's not like you think. It's not. Yeah, uh, it's it's controlled. It's highly controlled. Yes, Luca. but highly controlled. There are, so, there are only few uh, parameters. Um, only few way to control a reaction. Okay, there are some clever way to do it, but it's not uh, something that cannot happen in nature. You say uh, said uh, early that uh, sure you can have this kind of uh, condition in a lab. Why? Right. I, I, because you're never going to outside a lab. Uh, okay. Outside the because why? Because why? Because chemists are selecting what they want to put in their experiments, and they're getting the desired results they want. Out in nature, do you know you get chaos? Do you know what racemic mixtures are? Yes, uh, of course. Okay. So no scientist has ever solved that problem anywhere. How would you? I'm going to ask you because uh, you're a chemist. How are you going to get all left-handed amino acids? You can have uh, um, chromatography. Okay. Can happen in nature, why not? Or as a stereochemist, uh, or or a stereoselective reaction. And who's selecting? Why it? you cannot have uh, one in nature? Because we've never seen homochiral molecules ever form in that nature. You can why select not? it out. You can do it. The intelligent chemist, absolutely, I agree. Why you cannot uh, not have a, a chromatography in nature? You tell me why. You know why. I don't. I do not know. You know what uh, chromatography is. I can send you a couple you papers uh, on the uh, on the chirality problem because James Tor goes into great detail on that. I'm telling you uh, something. Why you cannot have uh, something like that in nature? I, what the uh, chromatography is? If if it worked, they would show it, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, if you could separate I'm, them, don't, uh, don't, don't you think they would show you, it? You know. Uh, uh, about what I'm talking yeah, tell me. about. Okay. Tell me. Okay. Chromatography is a way, physical way. If you have right and so, left hand. Uh, yeah, go ahead. If you have uh, two uh, left handed and right handed molecule, they can yeah. interact with uh, some structure, dust. Uh, chromatography yes. is. Uh, in simple, uh, you have uh, this uh, mm, glass structure in a uh, lab. You fill it with uh, dust, uh, or mm, uh, dust, it's not a good term. Uh, let me be, <laughs> okay. Le you uh, talk, uh, you um, put inside yeah, this kind of mm, uh, material. And yeah. you uh, can uh, um, sort two kind of uh, um, molecules, uh, a liquid. Uh, it depends. Okay. Okay. Uh, why it cannot uh, happen in nature? You can have uh, some kind of dust, some kind of material in uh, some spot, and this uh, material can interact with uh, the molecule. Yeah, you need you need uh, to understand that uh, abiogenesis is not something that uh, is happening right now. It's not uh, an, a process that doesn't stop. You can uh, have a, a molecule, and uh, that molecule can stay in a place for a long time. And yeah. Something can happen to this molecule. Something. It right. can be a reaction, a stereoselective uh, stereo reaction, or a chromatography. Why it's not possible? I would say because they're always in a backward configuration, and that's all we've ever observed. And even the top yeah. chemists in the world are saying this, that these mechanisms actually don't work. And I can get you papers on it. I'm not a PhD chemist, but PhD chemists are telling me this, including James Tor, who's a renowned chemist. He's but telling James you, you're not going to have this mechanism. It's a statement of faith, okay? You can understand that. Well, I wouldn't okay. say, 
Yeah, I, is, I have faith because I believe in God, and I admit I can't prove that. You but believe it's in a bias. Or... It's not good to have a bias in, in science. Oh. No, it's not. But you have to show progress for your hypothesis, and you haven't. But we are trying, okay? It's well, not I... impossible. In nature, you can see that life is composed by chemistry. And uh, there is nothing... Yeah. Uh, particular yeah. about it okay you can have some really uh, complex structure and it's fascinating but you cannot would, say, say something I've... made it just because you need to prove it okay right. we are trying and there are a lot of proof about it that I, Life I can say, I in uh, yeah, I, normal condition. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't say. You cannot I wouldn't... say, okay, God did it. No, we're not saying that. But we're not just saying God did it. We're people saying that like Tour, if you say, okay, he has a statement of faith. So he's right. telling you that the Bible cannot be wrong. And it's a bias. It's wrong to have a bias in science. We, okay? we haven't. Yeah. We're not, and we're not... Uh, I'm no expert about this and I did not prepare uh, because sure. I'm uh, in on video and uh, it's uh, right. eight but, but... Uh, in the morning. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> I just get up uh, off my bed. So. Right. But, but Luca, I would say you're doing the exact same thing. You're, you're building a straw man. You're eliminating a creator immediately. You're, you're invoking all these chemical mechanisms that have never been shown, by the way. You haven't shown this even in a laboratory. You're assuming this will be solved yeah, no, one day in the future. Yes. <laughs> no, you're, no, 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 no. You're assuming these processes and mechanisms will be shown one day in a lab. They've never come close. But uh, I'm telling you, it's not impossible to have a creator, okay? Okay. I do not believe in one, of course. Right, you uh, believe in abiogenesis, which doesn't have the evidence. I do not Lacking. believe in abiogenesis. Okay, so you're agnostic. No, it's nothing. Abiogenesis not. is nothing uh, about faith, okay? It's science. And no. I do not believe in it. If you show to me that I, abiogenesis is impossible i will uh, not uh, luca luca it will never be impossible to you do you know why because you'll push why? it to summit because you have to believe that it happens somewhere somehow I have to. you oh, absolutely uh, you know that i'm uh, uh, an ex catholic right right so am i okay I was so atheist. i do not uh, must believe in anything because no, no, no. Catholics right. are are no. not uh, are accepting uh, evolution. Right. It's not a problem for me. Right. Evolution okay. or abiogenesis. Right. We're, we're probably not going to get anywhere with this standing, but I would say that you believe in these mechanisms. You haven't shown them. You haven't shown the chemical pathways from 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 non life to life. Nowhere close. Lee Cronin just debated James Tor, and he admitted that he has no clue what life is and how life can happen, but he's gonna design it in his lab. He's gonna use all this designed equipment to try to figure it out. And that's fine, I don't have anything against that. We should be able to create artificial life, but does that help your we abiogenesis? No, we've copied it. We, we, we've copied life, we've copied it. We've never for actually- now, but uh, if you have a strand of DNA or an RNA- Where are you getting alive. your DNA from? Oh, wait a minute, that's information. Wait a minute. It's where, did the, where did the information come from? If you're just going to tell me DNA is a simple chemical and it can form over millions of unobserved years, that's nonsense. That's garbage. That's not science. I was telling uh, Anthony, uh, it's uh, in the call because uh, there is no... Le, but I was telling him um, in... Uh, uh, DNA strand, RNA strand, what's the important part? What's uh, um, the thing that... Well, you uh, have a backbone and you have a ladder. sugar. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know everything that makes up DNA okay. and RNA. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 
there is uh, someone here that knows what is the part in uh, the strand that interact with the, the other strand and uh, form the ladder. Well, okay, you, would you, can need, you would need proteins. You, you, Luca, you got to start. It's not proteins, uh, please. No, but you uh, have to have proteins. To you have to have a protein to do Wait any of Wait a this. minute. It's, I'm not uh, there yet, okay? okay? I'm telling you, there is a part. There are three uh, major um, parts in a RNA or DNA strand, okay? Sure. Uh, there is a sort of polymer, okay? Uh, but uh, a nucleotide, uh, the single um, part, uh, it's quite hard to... Uh, a polymer is made of uh, subunits, okay? A, a single subunit in DNA, it's a nucleotide, okay? Do you know how unstable all this stuff is, it is okay, under prebiotic? It's not, my, uh, it's not my point, okay? Right. This part has three parts, an acid, a uh, sugar. Sugar, sugar. Okay, yeah. and yeah. Uh, the, uh, in Italian it's azotata. The phosphate uh, azotata. Azotata. Okay, where, uh, where you have the interaction with the other strand. And what kind of interaction are? Yeah, tell me. Okay. Uh, tell us all. The third part. Okay. So, you're, there Luca, is not Luca, time little, out. Yeah. You're, you're, you're talking about genet formed genetic information. You're talking about DNA, RNA reactions, proteins. We have... No, you, you just, no, 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 no. We don't have any of that yet. We have inorganic molecules. We're trying to go from non-life to life. You're jumping to DNA and RNA. No, I'm y yes, just you went about a part of DNA. <laughs> so no, 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 no. You don't have DNA, DNA, man. You don't have DNA and you don't have RNA. Yes, yet. I'm. No, you don't. You. No, no, you don't. Uh, you are. It's not my point. You. I know. You don't really know what you're talking about, man. Because you don't. You're not. You don't. How are you going to go from chemicals that are first of all all racemic? Number one, you're going into RNA, you're going into DNA, you're going into proteins. You just jumped about a thousand steps forward. I'm telling you, you do, do not need DNA or oh, you don't? RNA. Okay, so there you don't need DNA and RNA. Simple so wait molecules. Uh-huh. You're going to build a okay. cell just with proteins. You can't even build a protein, man. You can have a protein. Okay, right. they can for they can, proteins can wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Stop right there. Mm. You just told me that a protein can form. Why not? Oh man! What's Anybody want to jump in here, man? Yeah, I think we should probably get to the next subject, uh, Luca. If you can give your three best evidences for evolution, I was telling you. No one's to ever experiment, and I Luca. can put. Uh, for a no, no, spot. no! You show me a paper where a protein is formed naturally. They would, they would give you a Nobel Prize right now, man, in chemistry. Yeah, it's impossible. One hundred and what is it? What is it? Uh, uh, Stephen Meyer, Stephen, Stephen Meyer, and James Tor have a whole video on just how proteins can form. So, Luca, you are way off, man. Way off. Why you you cannot have uh, one? What's uh, the impossible. impossible. One protein impossible. I'm trying to find the information now so I can tell you. I'm just Luca, trying to search. Out. Yeah. No, they're having they're having a lot of problems trying to engineer proteins. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to find the uh the search. I found it search function. I'm the RNA hypothesis is uh, about to die too. That Scotsack, he was the major Guy with the RNA world, he he withdrew he withdrew his paper. So I mean, it's going backwards. It's not nothing's gaining traction in RNA uh, abiogenesis. Yeah, but, it's not leading to anything. I, I mean, like I I call it stalemate chemistry because they take ten steps forward with their genetic engineering and then they go a hundred steps backwards. But uh, what do you think? Uh, do you need to know to prove 
or disprove abiogenesis? I'm uh, curious to about prove that. it, I would say, I guess what Jason was saying earlier, you got to have all your chemicals, you got to put them in a test tube, and they have to self-assemble. You can't have purified stuff. You can't have a chemist stopping the experiment and controlling side reactions. You can't have a chemist putting in activated nucleotides. You're showing deliberate design and you don't even realize it. But, you know, you have to be in denial. You really do when it comes to abiogenesis. No, uh, what uh, I'm telling you that you cannot have a single reaction with simple chemicals, life. Now do quite... Uh, an experiment you can understand it okay. well I, you yeah, need to prove the uh, a step yeah. another step another well, step another step yeah and you and have to build what's some the uh, the scientists doing the they're scientists. trying to do so and uh, i was telling you the third part and okay one and one i have one more question to, yeah I, yeah yeah one, one more question, because we're not getting anywhere with this. You've made up your mind. Let me ask you how they would prove abiogenesis under purely unguided natural conditions without the intelligent chemist. In other words, take all your chemicals, okay. put them in the test tube, and show it without the manipulation. Uh, okay. Uh, there is uh, an experiment, and it's... Uh, um, it was posted on my Facebook. Le, you can uh, not have in a lab uh, these kind of things because it's quite a big experiment, okay? But you can uh, do a simulation and uh, right. it's what well, they are trying to do. Okay, uh, let me know when that advances and you get this cell. I'd be really curious if you could the, actually do it. I'm trying to find it okay da, da, da. i would say your biggest problem is is the uh, activated nucleotides in the rna world that's the one thing if you look up rna world problems right now that's the first thing you're going to see mm -hmm. allora. what was Le... yeah I mean it because I need to. Mm. I, I just I find it incredible the level of of just denial that the atheist has to go through and the mental gymnastics that they have to go through just to deny that there's no intelligence behind all these origin of life experiments. It's just astounding. Uh, it was called uh, planetary planetary uh, simulator. And uh, uh, it's a software, and it's uh, running for a while, I think uh, two years, as for now. Uh, and and what, it's trying what, uh, to, uh -huh. yeah, to reproduce uh, abiogenesis, not okay, uh, yeah. just me, uh, uh, on the Earth, but uh, uh, in the galaxy, because uh, there is an hypothesis that uh, uh, some of the molecules are formed uh, away of our planet. It's just an hypothesis. It's not. Uh, it's okay. not something uh, there is a uh, uh, good uh, evidence for. But right. it's an hypothesis. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, and I'm trying to find it and where I can post it if I find it. Uh, these kind of things. Luca, uh, if, if you want to come back with a PhD chemist, and I'll come back with a PhD chemist, and we can we can have a debate that way. <laughs> okay, we can come back with a PhD, but yeah, I, I mean I have no problem I'm with that. I'm here to defend my position myself. Well, you're gonna look really foolish in front of a PhD biochemist, man. I'm not a PhD, but I can study. I can learn. Well. I mean, I've got some papers here by PhDs, and they're they're telling me. I that would love to read it. Uh, I'm not yeah. uh, against. Send me it. the link on that other hypothesis too. I'm curious about okay, that. Okay, I'm not trying. You got my YouTube, man. I just, uh, I, I, I just don't think you're understanding the uh, controlled conditions that they're using. 
uh, you say so, but I actually worked in a lab and uh, Right, but you I'm do not, know that you do know that no lab has ever come close to showing abiogenesis. Do you understand this? Yeah, it's not that simple okay. to have one. <laughs> it's well, even if there was a multi-step problem. But wait, Luca, even if it was a multi-step problem, which is what Aaron Ra says, he says there's abiogenesis is comprised of thousands of steps. No one has shown the first step to to lead to anything. In other words, even okay. even if you let's just say you manipulated all this RNA, uh, even DNA, I think Jason said even proteins, everything, what's going to make it all self-assemble and come alive? But when you say come alive, I was telling you um, before, a DNA strand, it's alive. No, you don't have life with RNA. Absolutely oh, not. Okay. No, you don't. No. If no, they no, are no, no, creating... No, no. Hmm? no you ha dude, you... Ah, man. You're way off, man. You do not have life if you have manipulated, designed RNA in the laboratory. You are nowhere near life. Not even close. No. The no, point just is another. I'm not telling you. They are uh, uh, creating... Uh, one artificial cell okay yeah and we went over telling that me that you need uh, a dna strand and uh, other portion of a cell but these portion are alive no 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 rna is not alive self okay no so no. you have some uh things that are not alive you are putting it together and wait well stop right gonna... there stop right there stop right there Who's putting it together and who's putting the a information in the course. molecule? A chemist or a biochemist? Well, wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Who's who's putting the information in the a molecule? A chemist or a biochemist? Okay, so an intelligent right agent. Now. Wait, stop, stop. Is it happening on its own or is an intelligent agent doing it? Right now, there is a chemist doing it or okay. a biochemist. Okay. Okay, right. But exactly. How you can have an experiment without a I just told you. I just <laughs> told you. I just told you. Take all the molecules that's needed, put them in the perfect solution, have them self-assemble, and produce this primitive cell. You shouldn't have to. So use you are uh, you are doing something. Okay. You cannot have a, a experiment without a scientist. I agree. But the level of control has to relate to natural conditions, does it not? Yes or no. It depends. Does it not? You yes or no? No, uh, I want, I'm asking you a question. Does it have to relate to natural chemistry or does it, if it shows manipulation, then it's no good? But uh, if you have an experiment, you must control it. But you no, 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 and it's not, and stop, no, then you're not showing abiogenesis if you're controlling it. Your molecules get destroyed under natural chemistry. James Tor has a whole video on this. You need to show the steps, but to have these steps, you must control the experiment. Okay. You just uh, need to show that something like that can happen in nature too. <coughs> That the condition you set can yeah. happen in nature. Okay, I, I but have you no... need to to control the experiment. Right, right. So it is highly controlled. That's my point. You're not showing unguided prebiotic conditions anywhere in the universe. So if you're putting in what you want and you're getting the desired results, and it's all done under intelligent agency, you've moved away from natural chemistry, and you didn't even realize it. <sighs> It's uh, yeah, I know we got a lot of denial here, but we're not getting anywhere. It's not denial. Yeah, I'm big time. You. Hello. No, you're not telling me anything because Lee Cronin, a top origin of life chemist, hasn't shown anything. But you, mm, yeah, I know. How can you tell that they show anything? Well, if I told you three times. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you one more time, and then I, I'm going mm. to bed. Okay. They they Sorry. use they use homochiral molecules 
And you know, you know damn well that in nature, they're all racemic. You know that. You have a mechanism that you say can yeah. work, but it's never been shown. It's a hypothesis. Number two, they're using activated Naturally. nucleotides, are not found in nature. And I'm telling you, you do not need RNA or uh, DNA. You can okay. have well, another. I th okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you know where all this is going to work? In fantasy mm -hmm. land. Why? How can you tell that it's impossible? Everything that has been shown has been contrived. But I'm telling you, if you are doing an experiment, you need to control the experiment. Well, then okay? you, you just you... need to uh, show okay, well, then... that can happen in nature too. But of no, course, no, 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 no. Stop right there. Mm. This is where you're in denial. If you're what? putting in the experiment what you want, and you're stopping it at certain times, and you're removing chemical reagents that you want or don't want, you've left natural processes. But if you show that these uh, uh, things can happen in nature, if you well, show you, you, that... Wow, okay. We're not going anywhere. <clears throat> yeah, this, is, this is a broken record here, but all right. It's not... It's not. You okay. need to uh, show that a uh, process like that it's impossible in nature. Well, they have never come close. So yeah, you can you can just keep saying you could say this but till you're hundred. You are years old. saying that they are never come close, but they right. have results. Okay. okay. No, those are no a hypothesis is not results and can highly control. It's not a theory, it. and I I can agree okay. with you. It's All not right. a theory. It's right. not a fact like yeah. evolution it's not right. a fact i oh. cannot show you to be true like right. a fact i cannot okay. all right thanks luca i appreciate it hello it's a pleasure to be here yeah stay safe man uh, yeah <laughs> it's bad up, uh, up here nice to talk to you luca oh you know you're still there good nice to talk to you mate Mm -hmm. I uh, I mean, we got we got James Tor. I can send you some more papers, but as far as you with the RNA world and the proteins, you're you're way off, man. I mean, maybe I made a mistake. I'm a chemist, not a biochemist. Okay, I'm not right. a PhD. Okay, and I'm uh, arguing with you, but uh, without uh, any preparation. I just woke up. Uh, sure. Be invited here, and I'm yeah. here. Sure. You know that when you speak uh, about something like that, uh, you need to uh, prepare. It's not uh, something you can know. Right. Do you know about Jack Shostek? Then he retracted his papers on RNA research. No, I do not. Okay. I'm uh, trying to uh, copy your links and <coughs> I want to read them. I yeah, uh, got Richard Clemens, uh, German origin of life chemist, PhD. I do not know every single uh, people. These are guys. Yeah, I don't know them all either. But these are guys on the front line that are, you know, telling the whole world that this stuff is highly contrived. And they're admitting it in their papers. Yeah, but I do uh, need a little bit of time to study these papers you are sending me and do a rebuttal of course <sighs> okay. it's not I like did. i can uh, uh talk about you about things that i do not know right. all right man uh i'm here just to tell you uh, what i'm thinking and uh it's important to know that it's not a fetish uh, a fate issues because uh, it was not uh, for a, a Catholic. It's not, and I'm no longer a Catholic. It's not the reason because I'm not more. I no more a Catholic, and so it's not the thing that draw me away from a religion. Okay, I'm just talking about it because. I do like science. I do like to 
engage in this sort of conversation and uh, uh, I'm not biased, okay? If you show me that impossible, it's okay for me. Uh, and, and I, I want I to give you, you I... a, an example, okay? Uh, I was a little child and uh, I <laughs> like uh, a lot of people really do like Jurassic Park, okay? And uh, I was uh, really fond of dinosaurs. And now I know that my favorite dinosaur, uh, Velociraptor, is uh, really uh, <laughs> like a chicken, and I sure. do not like it, okay? But well, let me ask you, if you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so if, if you, if you wouldn't... So Right, so that's a fantasy, but yet you don't consider abiogenesis a fantasy. You have no examples of it whatsoever. I do not uh, think as uh, abiogenesis as a fact. I think it's possible. Okay. I think okay. it's scientific and uh, it's a good hypothesis. It's not a fact. No, so it's I'm not believing billion, it billion, like billion, our billion, 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 billion universes. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I mean, sorry, you're never going to, Luca, you're never going to falsify it. You, you know what you're going to do the rest of your life? You, all you're going to say is that abiogenesis happened somewhere else. It's never going to be impossible to an atheist. They have to hold on to it. They have no other option. Yes, other you can. I can well, you uh, don't... think uh, a couple of things that um, uh, can make. Oh, what? God? Yeah, a what? creator? Uh, oh, okay. Mm. You show God, <laughs> it, of course, it's uh, uh a good step i think but yeah uh, like um if you show yeah, me what, that i, I would be curious what the third option would be because abiogenesis hasn't been shown god hasn't been proven. well so for what's the sure. third option aliens <laughs> i said i said we haven't proven abiogenesis uh, we aliens haven't proven do god not, uh, resolve anything because if you have right. uh, aliens you need to uh, have a creator of Aliens, okay. Well, yeah, exactly. And a is this, uh, we are in step one, of course. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say even step one. I, I would say you're in step one of copying things. You're not showing how any of this stuff could form naturally. It's not uh, an easy thing to do. You understand that, right? Uh, but, yeah, I, I would uh, say. It's... I'm just here to say that. It's not something so impossible. And uh, there are not two options. Luca, I could say the same thing about God, and you wouldn't consider that science. If I if I kept saying the rest of my life, oh, God's not impossible, uh, God's not impossible, you would say, well, no, 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 that could, that, no, we, that's not science. All you're doing is saying that abiogenesis isn't impossible, and yet you're putting forth no real evidence for it. There is a difference. Abiogenesis is about physics and chemistry, and we know that those exist. With God, you cannot show a God, because even if a God exists, is not in the reality, okay? So you've, so you've eliminated so something you cannot immediately. show with science, and a God can exist. I do not believe in it, but I cannot say that a God does not exist okay i cannot prove it to you right but it's not in the reality you cannot show me a god well no you i can't. can show me chemistry and physics okay i could like like we've been saying for 30 minutes now i can give you all the molecules and chemicals you need i can give you the smartest most brilliant minds in the world the most designed equipment and you still How can't can you do tell it? that's impossible to prove because if you start like that Not you will never find well i would say i would say if i gave you all the parts to a to an automobile you could you would need a mechanic to put it together number one so if you want to just think all this stuff can come together and self-assemble that's you you believe that man you don't have the chemistry but to back it just think uh, yeah, take uh, people from the uh, 80s, no, not 80s, from the last century, when the nuclear technology was not a thing, and say sure. to him, show me how an uh, atom works. 
we can observe it's atoms. It's not on... that easy. You can understand that. You yeah, but we observe years yeah. and years of study, and I can tell you what kind of things a chemist and the scientists uh, in right. general are doing. I know you gave you gave the same thing. Okay, yeah. you can you, tell me you, that uh, I'm you, not you, uh, an I know, expert. You, okay, I know you show you, me this kind of thing. It's yeah, not you, that easy. You, you emailed me. That. Yeah, you you emailed me last week. You said we can't produce a volcano in a laboratory. Yes. Right, but we observe volcanoes. Volcanoes yeah. ob are observed every day. Yes. Okay, so th that's <laughs> there's no relevance there, man. Like like we've been saying, we uh, can give you. Yeah, we can give you all the chemicals. We can. Uh, reproduce some uh, condition of a volcano in a lab but i cannot do it in my backyard it's what was telling you you right. were, were telling me okay show me uh abiogenesis in uh, your backyard i cannot do it i, I, I do you. not have the uh luca the luca you can't show it anywhere you can't even show it in the most advanced How laboratories in the world you? I'm telling you what kind of experiments they are doing. Now I'm uh, All right. taking okay, your but links. Yeah, you get my link. I'm sending you stuff, but you, you seem to ignore what they say. And uh, I'm not reading it, it yet, <laughs> yeah, of course. It, let it come it's through. quite okay. hard to do. Yeah, we're not really getting anywhere with this standing, but I think you uh, it's just denial at this point. And like I said, you know, some of these top chemists in the world are having a really difficult time, you know, engineering all this stuff in the lab. And it's not. Yeah, intelligent agents are doing it and they're still having a very, very difficult time. This is really you hard need chemistry. You an a scientist to do an experiment. You know it. Well, OK, are you familiar with the Stanley Miller experiment? Yes, and uh, it's a very old experiment. Tell me the problems with it. Uh, the condition uh, that they think uh, it were in the prebiotic years was were not right. Well, that would make and it harder. You show some uh, molecules uh, forming, right? But Tars. there, there were their uh, wrong uh, conditions. It, okay, it's so what a, are the a very old experiment? Okay, so are the conditions a total mystery? Uh, right now, I think that we have a better understanding of it. Oh, okay, so you, you have a better understanding, but you still can't but show you it. You will never be uh, all right, sure, I think. Right, but so you have I'm to... not an expert uh, on uh, these topics, so okay. I know that uh, the knowledge about it it's change uh, okay. well, the I'm experiment gonna... about uh, miller yeah. and urley was an old one and okay. it's been uh, uh, improved I, uh, it's yeah, no no they've no they've tried that experiment for decades and it's always a failure it's uh, it was wrong it were the wrong conditions so if you do it again it's you are doing it with wrong condition, but I do not uh, uh, think it was a bad thing because at the time they thought that uh, there were those conditions and they tried and they have some results. And it's what uh, scientists do. You have an hypothesis and you try to uh, prove it. At what and point would sometimes you- Sometimes you get it yeah. wrong. Right. Oh, it looks like um, he went backstage. So, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to try to f uh, finalize this and um, right. conclude Sorry, it. guys. And Jack, I'm not sh So you wanted to say something, Jack? Or I was going to talk about some stuff or ask you some questions, but, I mean, really, if you're going to quit, there's it's all right. I'll wait some other time. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I mean, conclude with this ab abiogenesis stuff, so. Yeah. I'd like to hear what you got to ask. Oh, I'm I'm actually more of it looking at it from a kind of a different perspective. I'm not really a, you know, 
geneticist or anything. You know, I'm just a pretty normal guy. I'm not a dumb guy, but I don't do that stuff. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of looking at it more from a different view. I don't get God to me is a very vague word, you know. And so maybe you guys are kind of looking at this more of a Christian perspective. I don't know. I'm kind of trying to figure that out. And also, I'm trying to draw a line of where this creationism thing starts and evolution thing ends. Like, so where are you guys basically saying it is God? And then what kind of God? And where is he pulling the strings at? You know what I mean? Well, I think that's so, a good question there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, keep going, Jack. Keep going. Yeah, so I'm just kind of trying to figure out mainly, I guess, your ideals on where that where that starts, where that ends. And kind of like as even at one point he was saying like, oh, well, what is it? What else is it? Aliens? Well, that's what I mean. I don't like you. You could say it's a creator because, for example, we create ourselves. We create life. You know, we create even organs now, you know. So we're doing all this crazy shit ourselves. So it's definitely not impossible for something to create with these tools that we're given. But when is that? What God is that? I don't get. And how do you, is it Jesus? You know, <laughs> that's kind of, I guess what I'm starting with or asking. I, th I think that's, a, uh, you know, some good questions because oftentimes when you debate whether it's abiogenesis or just a more general uh, debate titled like, you know, does God exist or is there evidence for God's existence? You know, those are kind of a separate, um, you, you can use separate arguments for that, but then you want to narrow it down to which God, right? And then we've got a whole nother uh, set or group of arguments, in, you know, in, in order to decide um, or differentiate between, let's say, the holy books, right? Is it is it the God of Islam? Is it some polytheistic God? Is it the God of the Bible? And then that's and that's usually where we would like if we can come to an agreement that okay, you know, there's a, there's evidence for a creator, there's evidence for a designer, for example. Well, what designer is it? Well, that's when we look to um, let's say if we started with the Bible. And Genesis, for example, as a starting point, now we can start making uh, predictions, retrodictions, for example, and we can see if they're accurate or we can see if some of the predictions would come true. Like, let's say if we looked at science, right, genetics, biology, for example, that's how we can um, come to an understanding as to who the designer is. And that, that's a whole other set of, of arguments that... Uh, well either myself or Matt or even Jason could point you to, but uh, go ahead, Jack, take your time. Well, look at it, look at it a little differently. Like I, I get that you could do a whole bunch of different gods, but, but what I mean is you guys are trying to say it is a creator, but say that this creator, okay. Is uh, cause you don't know what kind of creator it would be, you know, whether it would be Jesus or some kind of godly, like spiritual kind of creator. If it is, what if it's just a uh, energy creator, like just a flat ball of energy that keeps kind of growing as we grow, as whatnot grows, and it just doesn't have a mind. It just is. Are you and talking when you, about when like you theism? look at it? No, I don't know what you'd call theism, but I more look at it theism? like if you if you think of this God as completely not, you know, doesn't have a, a mental or just some kind of he's not trying to change the, what we're doing, you know, cause they always say, you know, we have freedom of choice. So really, if we have all this freedom of choice, he can't control what we're doing. He doesn't really then have a plan, you know, what, and then, then you're right back to kind of what evolutionists believe. And then there's right in the middle. And then we're stuck always arguing over, well, well, it's a God, but then they're like, well, no, it's just, chaos in nature and life and it just does this magically and all i can see is just n that never ends right there right there where you can't tell what god is what kind of thing he is what kind of strings he has on it and whether he's just kind of chaos or not well and i couldn't get I, I couldn't give you an answer to what god is i don't think any of us truly know but i asked the atheists a similar question i asked them what is the multiverse i mean 
how would you describe it? How would you prove it? How would you test for it? Because they give pretty vague answers on what all these other universes are. The multiverse shit's too yeah, much. I mean, I can answer. I think that's, I think that's obviously uh, false. I mean, to me, in my, in my understanding, though, uh, because if you think about it, the cause of the universe, since we have space, time, and material, the cause of the, t- I mean, the universe has to be spaceless, timeless, and immaterial. And it also has to account for the laws of logic. So laws of logic are absolute. So we have to have an absolute um, cause or an absolute standard for that. And anything physical is automatically put out the window because um, we have everything's finite when it comes to space, time, and material. So uh, when it comes to absolute causes, it needs to be uh, obviously the God of the Bible is the perfect candidate because he's a necessary being. He has all the attributes that can account for causal agency, the teleology in the universe. So we have um, what we would call the... uh, Oh, what's it called? Uh, you know, like we're we're in the perfect zone. With I forget what they call it. Uh, we live Goldilocks. in the Goldilocks zone. So I mean, that that all comes into purpose. I mean, if you if you get if you put the puzzle pieces together, uh, the God of the Bible is pretty easy to come to that conclusion. Yeah. And uh, another thing is that um, I also believe that when you were talking about well. I don't understand why well, there's a God that's going to be intervening from prayers. And then if that, that happens, that takes away free will. That also comes down to mis- um, uh, kind of not really understanding what the scripture is talking about with prayer as well. If people today pray that their favorite football team wins or when they lose their car keys, it's become ridiculous and redundant. When prayer is just a communication with, with the God of the scriptures, with the God of the Bible. And it's a communication that you want to have to, uh, you know, to – Talk to your father that's in heaven. And uh, that's kind of what it's about. It wasn't, it was never really supposed to be for selfish kind of things like I, I'm sick, God help make me better and kind of those things, because obviously the, that type of intervention <laughs> would, would take away free will. So it'd be kind of a waste of time. So I hope that kind of answers that thing. And can- uh, uh, another one would be uh, the same thing. Like, well, how can we determine what God, well, Unfortunately, we're stuck with whatever existed um, that we found writings for. So we have the Baha, uh, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita in India. We have uh, the ancient alien theory from Zachariah Sitchin, the Earth Chronicles. Uh, we have Buddhism. I mean, we have we can go down the list of all the different major denominations and try to go back to the original. That's what I usually tell people: go back to kind of the start. If, if it's just some watered down version that was originated last year, like Scientology or something, then obviously we shouldn't count that as <laughs> something that's absolutely true. So we kind of go back to the beginning and we look around and see what makes the most sense with statistical values and probability based on what the scriptures say, lining up to what we see in the world today. And that's how I did it anyway. So, I mean, we can get into more of that, but uh, I just wanted to get that thing out about uh, prayer real quick. <laughs> hey, raw, raw Matt, when you talk about, uh, M theory, I think you were talking that, about that a while back. Um, you know, how, I mean, that's kind of their magic in a way. Yeah. Matter of fact, M does stand for magic. Correct. Yeah. M, M stands for magic by its creator until they come up with a better theory or a better, more evidence. They haven't yet, <laughs> but you know, they've got, they've got to have something, they get something to go by. And, uh, the origins is the hardest part. That's why there's a lot of just kind of like, well, until we advance more in science, it's just going to remain skeptical up until that well, that's, time. That's, and that's what you just heard from Luca. I mean, he's never going to admit that, you know, it's it's never going to work. He, in, in, in his mind, it's always going to be possible. So, I mean, I mean, that's kind of what the theist or the deist would believe. I mean, God is, yeah, we can't prove it, but I mean, it's it's not impossible. And that's, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of what they're doing for abiogenesis. What are you saying is not impossible? Yeah, what's hard for us is God is spirit. So God doesn't have an, uh, uh, a thing for us to grab a hold of, like a nucleotide or a, or a chemical that we can put in a dish and say, well, there's God. We found him, you know, <laughs> so it's a little bit harder. But that's why God was excluded, because they say, well, God is in a naturalistic method that we can't uh, test. So it's outside of that. So therefore, the materialistic realm became everything that's science related. And uh, they just push everything out else out. That's why they don't allow 
anything God related in school anymore because it's not naturalistic. They don't believe it. So it's just outside of the theory because they consider it untestable. We say that it is testable, but they, it's just, it's already excluded. Medium. We, intelligent design is a medium. We can do through information to sell irreducible, irreducible complexity. Uh, I mean, we have, um, there's so many things, DNA barcoding now. I mean, there's uh, so there, it's, that's also a mis, that's a, to me, a misconception um, or purpose, people are trying to just uh, either try, it's a part of their worldview, it's their philosophy, they don't want to believe in God. And it comes down to sin and all this other stuff, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Go ahead. Yeah, good point, man. I definitely agree. Well, let's give uh, Jack some time here to uh, give us his thoughts on everything that's been said, and uh, maybe Jack, you can you can go over like what you believe, right? Do you hold to uh, e evolution? Do you hold to universal common descent as as a, a way to explain uh, the life we see? Uh, um, give us your thoughts. I, I I'm not really a I guess you could say a God believer. Definitely. I mean, well, I mean. As I said, it's vague, the creator thing. I don't believe in Jesus or, well, you know, even for example, if like it's going to be Jesus creating it, then, you know, obviously he's a very supernatural God that has a lot of power. And to me, this world seems very chaotic and whether I like it or not, you know, there's, there's good, there's evil, but it's consistent. It can't be ever stopped. It's always That's at war with itself true. forever. It always has been. That's one thing you can prove. It doesn't matter how scientific you are. You can tell that no matter what, there's never been an animal that hasn't fought to the death to survive. There hasn't been a type of a time where we haven't went to war with each other over the same principles we're even talking about. Well, that's man's sin. I mean, well, I know you don't want to accept the Bible. Life. Well, the animals do it. Well, you the know? Bible, yeah, but the, the Bible does have an explanation for that. I know you won't accept it, but there are there are answers to that, uh, th well, to why things well, are example, like that. I mean, there's there's answers to anything. For example, prayer. You know, I mean, prayer works. You know, and I'm not say that I'm not even a Christian, but I know that it works. That's a fact. It communicates. What, um, it, it brings a community together. It raises emotion. It yeah. brings in unity. There's so many things it literally does. What's, um, you can just say it works period what's but, your best explanation for the origin of the universe and how would you test for a multiverse i'm just curious multiverse I'm yeah not, i'm i i don't know the science behind the multiverse thing all i know is they believe that there's like other layers and that we're in a dimension or a hologram and that shit's so confusing to me because they can't even tell me what kind of hologram we're in how we're touchable by a hologram and then on top mm -hmm. like i that's just that gets so wackadoodle, man. <laughs> you have to. They're gonna have to get more evidence yeah, behind the kind of bust, uh, multiversity uh, stuff for me to get into it more. I want to bust that canard too, though. That somehow uh, multiverse somehow takes away from the existence of God. That's not true. Do you know there's philosophers that are actually? No, but that's the thing. Listen, that's a perfect example, real yeah. quick. I don't mean to remember, but well, that's I a know, perfect just, example. I want to bust a canard though that somehow a multiverse contradicts the existence of God or takes away from like we don't necessarily have to believe in God. Um, that's actually a canard that <clears throat> there's actually uh, physicists and philosophers have said it enriches the existence of God. Um, if anything, so it makes even uh, the existence of God even more grand, and that's what they're saying. So, I mean, that <laughs> so what if, if there is, I mean, the infinite universes, I think it's pretty awesome. It shows the um, the awesome, it, it bears witness to our awesome creator. But doesn't sure, that uh, take it farther from your creator? Or, well, I don't mean to be like that, but it really, really, it's like you, each time that say that we were to somehow find out there's a multiverse, that's a whole nother scientific realm of wacko doodle right. that we're now into. Okay. And then it's like, oh, well, it's still the Bible God. You know what I mean? But he hasn't been telling none of us this shit. Hell, he was chopping down towers, you know, when we were trying to rise to the skies, you know, and now, and now all of a sudden, you know, it's like, we're answering all these damn questions for ourselves and we can't like. It, it takes away from humanity's claim. Like in a way it's our curiosity. We were the ones that took the ships to new lands. We're the ones that are going out into space. We're the ones that keep climbing this mountain. And every single second, it's like, 
uh, he he was doing it all along, you know. It comes down to eternality, <laughs> well, though. I mean, there's only a few handful of face or gods that can um, fit that criteria. So it comes down to the Judaic Christian faith. I mean, really, if you, if you look at the attributes that are required for the for the sustainer of the universe, and also I would say even looking looking to fine tuning that if, I don't know if people heard of Hugh Ross, um, but he says yeah. the gravity wave telescope. Is fine tuned to like the twentieth uh, thousand or twentieth trillion power. Well, the universe is seventy times past that. So, whatever the cause is, it's seventy times past intelligence yeah. of humans. So George uh, George Ellis compares the multiverse to a bread machine, and he says, "Well, bread is complicated, but the bread machine is a million times more complicated and highly calibrated than all the trillions of universes that it's producing." So it doesn't really get the atheist out of anything. No. <laughs> well, I mean, in that way, you could call somebody, everybody's going to be like, well, no, you're agnostic. You question God. And then you think there's like this hope. Oh, I, like, I, oh, I, I, could, I could possibly believe in him. But in reality, they might think, oh, yeah, they're always going to come to that same conclusion with most of these people. Okay. Yeah. It's, a creator could do it, but whatever thing that is i don't know and he's not going to tell us he's not trying to tell us any soon and we still are going to have to make all of our own answers and all of our own answers have came from the unknown just curiosity about finding answers to that shit not most right. of the time from any of the scriptures not that they do bad well i mean the scriptures <laughs> do have answers i'm sure you you know i mean of course the atheists reject the bible but like I said, there are answers. I mean, there are, you know, reasons for this. You may not accept it or like it, but we do have explanations. I know you're going to reject them. Yep, exactly. We'll no, see. I don't reject anything. I'm, I am very open. But as I said, the balance thing to me is very realistic. And when, when you have somebody that seems to be navigating the strings, it takes away from the fairness of the game also. I and would agree, think, but I would say you what, feel whatever. Like, and then you feel like I don't want this operator here doing that. I almost would rather have this natural balance of things where I know that there's some way I can control it and I don't have to be loyal to a certain section of the hierarchy or not. And then when, you, when you're like, okay, it's this God, it always forms this hierarchy in this chaos. You see what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden now I'm picking a place and now I'm aligning myself. Yeah, when it should be just random. Well, I'll That's tell you what, man. I, I didn't I didn't like my father growing up, but he was still there. I mean, you may not like God and the rules that he set up, but he might be there. <laughs> I don't hate but him. I, I like, you know how Santa Claus works for little kids, too. You know, well, and I, it works really damn well. It, it yep. prevents this kind of thing. And I like it, you know, and I like God, too. But there's a point where I find God to be. And like you, people make him an end zone. Like you guys, you're open. You don't make him an end zone. You guys believe in science because you're all very smart. I've been watching you. If I have a lot of respect for you, you're smart. You know what you're talking about. You guys know what you're talking about is about science. But you you haven't made God your end all. You haven't been like ah, I can't answer the question. So so you know, it's I just have to have faith. You know, it's it's him doing it. You still are trying to figure out how he's doing it. There's what, um, people out there, that's their end all. Yeah. Well, leave it up to him. I don't need to know the answers. What 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 do you think is pulling the string strings, so to speak? I mean, if it's not God, I mean, what would be your best explanation for I don't know how it all got started? I'm just curious. No, I'm randomness. Okay, you know, but how did the dark and light led to one thing and then that led to another thing and another thing and another thing and well, well, you got actually. You want to you want to know want a crazier theory? To be quite honest with you, is I think it's continual. I think that you know, I have there might be a big bang. I think that it explodes, yeah, yeah. it comes back in, and like we recycle it over and over and over again through a very long amount of time, and it's just a continual thing. And so, like, but even though instead of multi universes, I believe that there was just been an indefinite one that's gone on and on and on and on and on. Sure, it had to be somewhere <laughs> in the first place. Yeah, that's that, what in India. That's the Mahabharata. That's what they believe. They every twelve, uh, twenty-four thousand years. No, no, it's much longer actually. Twenty-four 
24 million years, I think the re- universe recycles itself over. We're on our fifth one right now to them. I think oh, it's yeah. the big bang and then the big crunch. And then the big bang and the big crunch. It just yeah. well, there's a lot of these theories floating around. Like, for example, right now, have you guys heard that like gravity is supposed to maybe have mass? And there's different things that make me think about it. And you know how, like, for example, people get explosions wrong in space, and they always talk about the big bang. But if you see space as a vacuum, it like bangs and it sucks in real quick, right? Ever seen that? Have you ever wondered that? if we're in a bang, but instead we're in the suck part in, like we're coming back <laughs> towards the middle. I, I think and then they still... talk about stars going away from each other. Well, but if the ones that are coming closer to the middle of it are faster and going towards it faster, which would make perfect sense. And then we're going away from the ones farther away. And so we're spreading out more. But what's the mechanism that got it going? Cause Lawrence Krauss believes in this quantum vacuum. He says it's nothing, but it's actually something. What, what, what is the mechanism? I'm still curious to what uh, the mechanism is. Maybe it's God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's actually research now that they, it's like modern research and it's quantum information, but they're finding information as a property of the mind. Um, so it's, a, it's an emergent from mind. And it's so easily demonstrable uh, in quantum mechanics and through the double slit experiment, observers are necessary for existence to even be possible. Who set the laws of quantum mechanics in motion? Laws yeah, made a good law question. Good. Yeah, that's what Max Planck said. I mean, he yeah. was a deist. He was a pretty smart guy. Yeah. Well, got to start the, the matrix. The, yeah. motion, the, the matrix, yeah. I mean, what started the matrix? I mean, how did it start? <laughs> I'm, I'm open. No, no. I just think that, you know, if we're going back towards something, and what if we all go back towards something, it blows up again. Recy- recycle uh, you still have to show what that mechanism was though that's i think we're there's no evidence still in the first place. Well, we got a lot of stuff pulling on us you know that's the whole vacuum idea and it would make perfect sense that you know if we're getting sucked into something too that would make a reason for us to be you know spinning getting sucked towards the sun getting stuck towards warm areas you know all the materials are getting kind of more sucked towards to each other you know right. i don't know it feels like it explains a lot of shit so, you ne- Jack, you never let me know. ask you something. Um, is the moon there when you're not looking at it? <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> In fact, I can. I'll, I'll even cite you this from actually uh, from PhD physicists. They'll, they'll, that's what they say. The the moon's not there when you're not looking at it. What, you mean it's somewhere else? No, it just means that. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a, uh, a figment of <laughs> your, men- it's a, it's figment of your, um, consciousness. See, consciousness is, uh, it's, it transcends reality. So I'm mean, just going to put it that way. Like matrix. Um, no, like it's just everything. Like around the moon's you- not there when I don't see it because right. it's not in our digital framework anymore like i'm watching this all through a vr headset and since the moon's not there anymore it's just not there because it's not programmed in that thing anymore yeah i mean to put it, it's just reality is not objective and uh th- i think that's a universal i mean it's pretty much a consensus now uh if there is no such thing as fundamental anything natural material that those things just don't exist so um it's really coming to mind it's coming to idealism now I mean, we're coming into that revolution pretty soon. So I just learned, I think you should check into. Dude, you honest to God, do Ale- you know Alex Jones believes in that shit? I mean, that's Alex Jones's thing is the multiverse. You know who else believes in this multiverse? Uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk <laughs> is the multiverse. Do y'all know that? Well, so does Don Page, and he's a Christian, but he just thinks that there was an ultimate God behind it all. I don't know, man. And you know, you know, some of them believe that they got to tap into the AI. They got to tap into the AI yeah. mainframe, so that will help them learn to to go to the other level, and that they believe that the other levels are eviler, and that's kind of like the hell. And they're trying to bring your negative energy down to their multiverse level, and that the heaven is the the god part and it's trying to bring you up to its multiverse level which is more uh, less sinful reincarnation type i don't know area are they, <laughs> are they the lawgivers better <laughs> are, they, are they the lawgivers because i'm like you know somebody said you know where did the laws come from 
Especially the laws of logic. This stuff, as well. this stuff gets kind of crazy to me. That's what I mean. It's just too much. Like it's a it's a sci fi plot at that point. <laughs> but isn't it funny? It. Isn't it funny how the atheists will invoke aliens, all these other dimensions, all these other infinite universes, but God is total, you know, fantasy. <laughs> Yeah, that that does blow my mind. Anything That's why I'll never Jesus. say you, I'm never going to say that. Yeah, this this creator can't be, and I'll never say that he possibly didn't bring down a disciple like Jesus just to help us out one time. It's it is reasonable because if all that other shit is reasonable, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I just I don't know. It also can be to me. I think just chaos seems just way more explainable. I mean, every single time you're like. You're always asking why God at the same time as you're praying to him. And have you ever just thought, man, it's just like Russian roulette, <laughs> you know, for example, it's this damn virus. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know damn well that I, I can't see a, a godly instrumental, you know, he, he has all things planned out unless he's literally trying to make sure that he creates the population down. And in that case, why isn't he making us smarter to get off the planet? Can he help us there? And then we're all dying from a coronavirus. It feels very random. It's always hitting older people, nice ones. It doesn't matter who you are. You know, that's, I like explaining that to randomness. When I explain it to God today, that makes me hate him. You know what I mean? You explain it to randomness. You can't really do anything about it. You're just going to have to fight it. Try to well, make I, peace out of it. I think that speaks <laughs> volumes, man. When you just said that you have hatred towards uh, like, you know, a creator. I mean that that you know. I mean there are reasons. You like can I love said. him too, though. You know, you can have yeah. days that you love him. Like when I look well, at my child and I'm like, "How Jack. the fuck did this happen? How did I make this cool little kid?" And then I'm yeah. like, "So Jack, the unknown." I think <laughs> I think your emotions um, are not reasonable. I'll, I'll explain. So let let's just say God did stop the coronavirus. Do you think he would be re he would be next required to stop the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, and then tell, and even even bumping your toe would be him required to stop. And then if he, if he takes that away, then there's no such thing as reality. Reality is futile, and uh, it's needless. And then what's worst of all things is this living in a um a, a worth or a useless reality. It's a um, uh, futile reality. So think about that as well. I do. I find a peace in that, I guess you could say. I've been doing that for a long time with my life. I've definitely found a peace in that that I like. Um, I mean, that's kind of what, you know, for example, you got mosquitoes, right? They fucking live to die. They, they live for months, they die. Live, breed, die. Live, breed, die. Annoy the fuck out of us, then die. Their existence is so meaningless in a way. I mean, it's for the bigger picture, if you could think about it. But to me, it's almost like another chaos evolution. This little bug just managed to figure out this way of fucking keeping on going. It sacrificed so much of what it needed to do this thing because this just worked for it. And then you got chickens. You know what I mean, the damn things evolved over time. They're like, they don't even run. They don't fly away anymore. We've bred them over time to be fat and lazy and pathetic. And you can obviously see how our effect just change their life and you know when you see this kind of chaos you're like okay well that that's that, that's how you make peace with it it's like part of what it's supposed to be you never know you know for example we could go into the future and chickens are going to be right there with us and why why because we decide they were delicious they're going to run along with us all the way through space time and they picked that smartest decision. And who would have thought chickens right there beside fucking the kings of the world or space? You know, <laughs> we're creating everything and we still got these fucking chickens. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Did they make a good choice. <laughs> well, I mean, we don't we don't know who's doing the choosing. We don't know where the laws came from. We don't know where the first chicken came from. We don't know where the first cell came from. We're back to the very square one of trying to explain, you know, how it got started. So, I mean, I see your point, but again, it's ultimately not answering anything. Hey, is that the name of your channel, Jack? That like the, I don't the have Jack a channel or anything? Or, oh, you don't. I mean, have... I guess it's my YouTube account. Oh, okay. So you don't have like any videos or anything that anybody can comment on? 
No, sorry. Well, upload anything. Upload a one-second video of complete darkness and silence so someone can comment on it. Because I, 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 I mostly I'm on a phone and 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 it'd be nice to be able to 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 share a few uh, links with you and stuff like that. Oh, over the YouTube. Oh, yeah, that's. Yeah. I think yeah. If you upload like a video that's even just for a few seconds and just title it comment video and, and that just, just makes you have a channel then we could comment on it yeah, yeah I, I never mess with being youtube -y. i always just kind of mess with uh watching it <laughs> but you mentioned something yeah. about mosquitoes and chickens but according to evolutionists um there are great grandfather <laughs> so we're reduced to mosquitoes and chickens um, so think about that, maybe like our humans are distinct. We have um, moral, uh, the ability to make moral choices, to uh, do super rogatory acts. And that means to go above and beyond what is uh, considered to be like general morality. I mean, you have people like, let's say soldiers step on a grenade for another person. I mean, that's, that's just, that doesn't work in evolution. That makes evolution would say that is crazy. Um, so think of th about things like that as well. Yeah, well I, I, I think back up. an evolutionist I'm, argument. Oh, sorry, go on. Well, I was just going to say I'm, I'm enjoying just kind of sitting back and, and listening to the discussion. It's interesting. But I think a lot of what um, what Jack is, is mentioning and uh, I guess things that bother him, whether it's the chaos or the in, in the world that we see. But I think, um, you know, entropy that uh, Ram, Adam, and myself uh, talk a lot about uh, whether it's entropy in the universe or genetic entropy from the fall that we read about in scripture. I think that can explain a lot of the issues that, that you're having, uh, Jack. And I kind of wanted to pass it over to Matt real quick just to see if he's on the same page as B with, with that explanation and kind of what his thoughts are on that. Uh, yeah, we can answer pretty much everything with our model being genetic entropy. Like, uh, there's a video, uh, obviously he didn't see this if he's new to the channel because it goes back months now. And I mean, I've made hundreds of videos since then, uh, but it's, it, it shows the genome of an ancient man and it shows that they had a less overall mutations. Their, their health was better than ours today. They, they, they were, they were thriving as where uh, today we're riddled with disease. Did you know that uh, every year, or I'm sorry, every three months, the human genetic database adds 6,000 new genetic mutation diseases to their database. That's horrible. That's annually like 24,000 or something. So we see diseases going up. Now, most people go, well, why isn't God intervening? Well, I mean, <laughs> everyone would know he's God then. And besides, when he did intervene, it was it was unfair because he was intervening with our freedom. <laughs> so you can't have it kind of both ways. But what I'm getting at is when you go back and you look at what things were designed for, you find mosquitoes were designed to help pollinate plants. They weren't they weren't disease spreaders like they are today. Uh, disease, it happened because of the fall. We, we go backwards in time. And you said, it, we, no matter how far back we can go, we see death and disease. Well, that's because we believe what you're looking at on the fossil record occurred during the flood. So you saw all life, everything together in just one massive pile through all these different there, things of rock. And you see what looks like millions of years of death and dis disease and destruction. As where our model really doesn't show that it says in the scripture that all animals were created to eat plants and God said this, this was good. And when we go back in our model and we look, we find exactly that. I even made a video on that. You can see that all life can easily live on plants. Even today, I think only except for cats, they have a gene that's broken. That doesn't allow them to break down the amino acid that their body normally would make. So they have to require it for meat, meat now. But pretty much everything has the ability to live off of plants. Um, so if they can still do that today, obviously, when their genetics were better and superior, they were able to thrive off of it even more. So our model shows that everything was good and it has fallen and it's and it's in a decayed state now. And there's more disease and it's only going to get worse. So that's kind of like how we view it. It's called the genetic entropy model. And the model is mostly designed uh, by John Sanford as predicting the extinction of the human race since the creation of man. And that's kind of his model. I just extrapolated that into animals and to try to show the exact same thing. So we see, we wanted to show like everything was good and then it fell. And now all of a sudden we have all these problems 
And now we're blaming God for it. But in scripture, it says it was because of you that the earth is cursed. And since that time, thorns appeared. And then all of a sudden, animal turned against animal and man turned against man and man turned against animal. And then we have the world today and we're wondering, why did God do this? Well, actually, we did it. <laughs> he, he gave us one rule and we didn't even do it. Basically, one rule. <laughs> Don't eat it. We ate it. But it's uh, you know, it's they, our, our model is pretty simplistic, but uh, when when you look at it, uh, most people don't consider that as a as a thing. They, uh, and and that's why I had you know Matt jump in there because um, everything that that you were uh, talking about is kind of an issue to you as to you know is there a God? Why would He allow all this uh, chaos in, in the universe? Um, but that's exactly what our biblical based model would predict, just as uh, Matt um, iterated, right? I mean, death, degeneration, and extinction after the fall. We would predict that, you know, things are going down and 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 not up. And these are all the things that that we actually see. And just like he um, talked about with the uh, with the database, with with diseases, I mean, we see um, entropic degeneration literally on all levels. I mean, we see the uh, rates of cancer, or, um, you know, they've skyrocketed. We see environmental-related uh, degeneration. I mean, we see Alzheimer's, dementia, autism. Uh, clearly, people are saying has some kind of genetic component to it. Asthma, autoimmune diseases. I mean, these aren't good things, but these are all expected based on the fall. Because you can, you can take this point right now of, say, accumulated uh, genetic mutations, and genetic diseases and take that back to a point in time of least uh, genetic entropy, say, um, in, in our genetics and in, in the universe. And, and that would be a point of creation, a point of um, perfection. And, and normally I'll, I'll ask, um, you know, the evolutionists that I'm discussing, I'll be like, you know, you say mutations are, are a source for variety that, that's going to take your fish to fishermen. But um, why do we see this pandemic why do we see this entropic degeneration on all levels and, and and generally they can't explain it when in fact we can uh, explain it perfectly from from our model so what we see in this world in this universe when it comes to the chaos when it comes to the decay the the fossil record that speaks of extinction um this is directly expected from uh, like i said the biblical model and, and the fall yeah agreed well, one thing that a guy always used to say to me from a Christian point of view is a good argument for you guys was that if a virus is going down or something like that, you say that God wouldn't want to intervene because then he would choose between his children and then his other children would hate him for choosing the ones instead of the others. When you say that anyway, <laughs> that's a good one that I know just to give you for the future. But uh, <laughs> another one that what I mean is when, he, when you say that too or anything like that, you know that he's you know can't do it it's just kind of goes back again it makes you think okay well if he can't do this then he's just letting it be chaotic on purpose and then from an evolutionary standpoint you start thinking to yourself and also really quick i have to say from evolutionary standpoint i, I think like evolution to be wrong at the beginning it's like an interchanging thing that's science that interchanges with evolution okay right. so when i when i when i look at it that way I think of it as uh, um, they always say that evolution is uh, the strong survival of the fittest, right? And that's a, a, a species that can survive in a environment and breed in it, basically. doesn't matter what yeah. the environment is, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't even call it you know, survival of the luckiest because it's all about who's reproducing more. And that's not always yeah, exactly it kinda who's, is, who's the fittest. Whether you like it or not. Well, the right. fittest, exactly. even though the fittest, they say it, but the fittest actually means that, you know, it doesn't actually mean the strongest guy or whatnot. Well, it just means that. Like, selfish. for example, chickens again, chickens are evolving and they manage to keep coming down the line and hang out here with us, even though they're obviously not the strongest creature, but they made somehow some genetic decisions to let them keep coming into the future. Now, as they make these decisions, like Matt was saying, um, with, uh, you know, the people changing the genetic code or genome or what were you guys saying it was? You've been talking yeah, he was about just, it a while. 
the, the word. Yeah, he was just pointing out that the um, that genetic mutations, which are generally negative, right? They're like mistakes. Uh, yeah. They're typographical mistakes in a text. Uh, they're accumulating from generation to generation, uh, degenerating us more and more, leading to more disease. Um, is is kind of what he was getting at. Yeah, why well, I, I don't why well, I'm I don't get that because when you talk about evolution, they always talk about they can they evolve, but ev evolutions aren't always good. There's always bad ones. Like for example, maybe if you get more brain power, you're going to lose, you know, mass, health, all these other things that existed before. You know, so maybe we gave up some good things to have what we have now. They claim mutations we used to have babies, as, used to have babies yeah. with soft heads, and and now we have babies with stronger heads because they start evolving over time in a way. You know, like so that's why I mean that's still to me a little bit chaotic. You know, it's even choosing how we thrive. It's sometimes good, sometimes bad, and hell, sometimes we have people born with complete defects, and it's just like why. You know, why is, again, why is that not chaos? And sometimes don't you rather that be chaos? Jack. Don't you rather not have God Jack. make mutations like that? Yeah. Jack, can you read? I mean, like, you are you fluent in reading in that? Or, because oh, I mean, yeah. it was only just, oh, good. I'm sorry. I, as I said, I'm not, I don't, I'm not a scientist like you guys or any of you guys. And no, I no, no, study no, these genomes a lot. <laughs> there's some stuff I want to post for you because I'm so sick of saying it over again. You've heard my, um, explanation if you've watched us about that that thing I saw in my lounge room, right? Look, what I want to do is this. In this chat section, when this video goes up, I'm going to put some a comment in there just saying Jack, and I'll put some stuff in that comment and have a look at it if you want or whatever. It's up to you. <laughs> and then I wanted to say something real quick too, Jack, because it seems like, especially in these times that we're living in with the coronavirus, and uh the pandemic and you know the mass hysteria that's going on uh but most people don't even realize that um viruses and we talk about this uh, quite frequently the majority of viruses are actually beneficial to not only our bodies but also to the ecosystem um the ecosystems of the world the oceans for example uh so this all falls in line with what um you know ram adam myself were discussing that it, when you take all of this chaos back to a point of say least chaos or least entropy that is a point where the uh the mosquitoes you brought up you know uh, they make sense. The viruses make sense. Um, it's just, it's, it's due to mutations that have entered our system and entered our world um, that have led to what we see today. You know, you don't want to look at the world we see today, which is in, in a state of chaos. It's in a state of, of, of um, decay. You don't want to look at the initial creation in the same way that we see the world today would be my point, like the viruses. I mean, people typically think of a virus as bad. Were you aware that viruses generally are beneficial and good? Maybe in cases of vaccines. Well, in, um, for example, in, in our bodies, we actually have trillions and trillions of viruses. Um, you've probably heard it before. We have more bacteria in our bodies than we do cells. And yet we have more viruses in our body than we do cells and bacteria. And the viruses uh, are actually um, being used to regulate the amount of bacteria and bacterial species we have in our body. Um, so no, it's not just vaccine related. It's, it's this symbiotic relationship um, that we see in our bodies and in the ecosystems between viruses and bacteria. So even viruses and bacteria that we look at as something bad is actually evidence for a, a creator. Do you know, I mean, do people even know what a virus is? Yeah, Little it's bitty just bug like, that just mutates itself. No, it's just again. defective yeah. machinery <laughs> of, yeah, if, if, of information. It's like a defective machinery inside the cell. Well, it, it wasn't originally defective or else they wouldn't be beneficial. If a right. mutation... It, it, for one, when a virus crosses species like this coronavirus, for example, it can go from good to bad. Or there's even some, um, there's some scientists, evolutionists, I believe, and creationists that are, are actually making the case, a lot of this is theoretical, that uh, viruses we see today 
um, have actually been created in us by cellular parts, right? Because cells are packaging things in a variety of ways. And then, oops, they've accidentally packaged something that is exactly what a virus is. So possibly, this, a lot of this is theoretical, but possibly viruses came from our genetics than what most people uh, typically think of. Like we have what look like viruses in our genome. That's when you can get into the um, like ERVs that we talk about and the retrotransposons or whatever. But uh, point is, um, viruses in general that I'm guessing you look to as something bad and negative is actually in reality something good. What, what, Jack, I have a question for Jack. What, uh, what's your opinion on viruses? Cause I've heard that from, I've heard different uh, answers from atheists. Are they good? Are they bad? Uh, it's kind of like, I, yeah, I mean, they kind of want atheists kind of want to have their cake and eat it too on the virus issue. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard some say that they're very bad and they shouldn't exist. And then Morris, some, do you mean immoral when you, when you say bad, Tony, are you talking bad? Like in a, Health Both. I, I mean, I mean, out in the environment, in nature, and yes, I mean morally, because I've heard different answers on that. And well, I, I think what Tony, I think the question Tony's asking is perfect. So everything that that we've just kind of uh, iterated to you about viruses and and the benefits of viruses. So now, w would you concede that okay, you know, what I used to think about viruses as being something negative, I now see that okay, these viruses are good for the ecosystems of the world and the in our human body. Yeah, we would I mean, die of bacteria without the viruses. It's called phage. Without phage, uh, right? We would die. Oh, I definitely yeah. agree with you that like. Obviously, they're good viruses and whatnot. What um, but obviously, the, this virus is killed I, every day by, by viruses. Then if the I didn't hear you. <laughs> What'd you say, <laughs> uh, Jason? You're kind of in and out with your audio. Oh, am I? It, can you hear me now? Yeah, it sounded yes. like you're behind me. It was weird. Can you hear me now? You can't hear me. Yes or no? Yes. No, I can't. <laughs> Well, you can not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that classic commercial. I pray. Can you hear me now? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the viruses, this viruses in the ocean kill forty percent of the bacteria in the ocean every day. Forty percent. If the viruses weren't in the ocean controlling the bacteria, the the, the ocean would overrun with bacteria and everything in the ocean would die. Exactly. So the viruses are beneficial. The vast majority of viruses are beneficial. The very, very small amount of them mutate and become bad, and that's happened since Adam's fall. God said exactly. they from that. Right. They're anyway, defective. Let, that means they're degrading, they which follows with the, um, the fall of Adam. Absolutely. And that, and that's why a lot of the, the bad viruses are coming directly from our own genetics, because what started off good and beneficial has now turned into something bad and negative due to uh, mutation, due to entropy. But I guess the point is, do you see now how all of these things are readily explainable from our model of genetic entropy? Um, and even in the universe, the second law of thermodynamics, the law of increasing entropy, everything is winding down in, in the universe. If you take that back to a point of least increasing entropy, that would be a point of creation. And the first, the first law of thermodynamics says that matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So obviously we know the matter is not eternal because of the second law of thermodynamics. So then there's kind of like a twofold problem for the uh, atheists. They're stuck between a rock and a hard place because both those laws necessitate a creator outside of the creation itself. I mean, think about it. You God, see that creator, he's been to all of our funerals. He's already seen the end from the beginning. You see, like, as I said, in balance, like yang and yang with shit, you know, like this ever, it's like you got rats. We can live with them. You don't want to kill animals and stuff like that. But then when rats get out of control, they become a rat plague. It becomes a big, giant freaking problem. Now we got to kill them in numbers. We got to get rid of them. They become a, you know, another probably it's, it's again, never ending problems. You always have these problems constantly. We're fighting problems, fighting problems, fighting problems, new problems, hurricanes, plagues, viruses, everything that we have. We have food that's good for us, but then if we eat too much of it, it makes us fat and kills us. And 
Oh, there's good and bad with every damn thing that you come with. There's you can't find anything that is universally good, universally bad. There's balance between all of it. And I see that as a another conflict. It's just fighting itself, you know. And we need there it's literally trying to kill us. It's a the planet trying to get rid of us, trying to fight us off, and we need to find a way to fight back. I would say so. And I look at it as a problem that needs to solve. Have you ever heard God loves a working man? I think find truth in that. Yeah. Everybody who just makes action. And so I don't look at that as a religious thing at all. I don't look at that virus as a religious thing. I look at it as a an earth thing. Nature's trying to fight us and we're competing. And we got to do something about it, basically. Well, I mean, Jesus Get off this planet, too. He taught the opposite. <laughs> uh, he says to love, uh, be selfless, and, 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 and instead of thinking about yourself, think about others and help others. I, I would say he... Well, I mean, of course, help others. I yeah. mean, us as a species, not like me, myself, you know, I, I, virus fighting humanity type thing. So would your answer be yes, it's actually a good thing for the population, or no, it's you know how, how do you what what where do you lean oh no i don't i i am very pro human like i don't like anything so, i think we should take over this planet like a virus move over to the next one move over to the next one take those ones and no matter what try to keep as many people alive as possible throughout this process well darwinism says the opposite mm, people yeah. need to, people need to continue to die in order to make advancements so i, I mean that definitely puts us at a wall. A filter. Well, it's, it's exactly and if you're a colored said, ape, that's um, a really good point. You're you're a that's lesser a really than a white person. person. Right. There yeah. are some, uh, racist implications with uh, Darwinism, but just like Tony I mean, humanity, said, I don't I don't know where the I, I in all people, I don't think there's a specific. Do you love um, your kid? Do you love what? your kid? Yeah. Would you want him to die to make an advancement for society or stop a disease? Would if he wanted, that's his choice. You would say, Definitely his would. choice to do with what he wants with his life. But many people make that decision, don't you think? Well, I think it's amazing well, that the Bible says we are all of one blood. You know, all the nations, we are all of one blood. And yet genetics, modern genetics has now confirmed that, that you know, there's there's not different races. Don't think I'm a racist. Don't Human think race. I'm a racist in any way. No, 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 I know. Together, no, no. We, I, I, I 100% no, think all people. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. We're just criticizing <laughs> evolution. Um, but I think it's just an amazing thing that the Bible has always said that and now modern genetics um you know proves that but i think i think modern genetics modern science in general like um the question that tony was asking you actually tony made a good point that yeah according to evolutionism uh you know death brought man into the world but according to our model god brought man into the world so you're talking about homozygosity and, right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i haven't said that word today there uh praise but um uh, well, now, oh, th th that's where I was getting at. Yeah, like Tony, he, he was asking you a good question that like, um, so, you know, now do you agree that something like viruses and even bacteria that people uh, typically look at as something bad in the world? Because I get that question all the time. Like, why did God create bacteria? Why did God create viruses? Just look how bad they are. Look how much harm they cause. But I never now, would disagree um, with that. No. Yeah, so, Okay, so you would agree that that uh, you know, as I said, everything has a good and bad. But I just don't think you can also claim that's you can't just say that's God that did it because He did it for a reason. It was to be good and bad. You could still say just chaos did it to be good and bad well, because that's what chaos is—a whole bunch of good and bad well. shit. Well, wait a minute. Here's a good question. Here's a good question. So, if 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 what we see is chaos and everything's winding down, everything's out of control, decay, extinction, death. Um, it, it, who wound it up? You know, if 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 then he could be just a starter. Yeah, who's the starter? Then now again, you could do that. Could be your chaos god, where it said you you know you got your Jesus God who seems to want to manipulate and help our species and guide it in a certain direction, which more like a shepherd type of god, you know, but, one that seems to care about its children. And then you have another kind of god, a more chaotic god that just seems to be giving us the energy, the strength. And you could say prayer, for example. Every time I say, "Man, I just want the strength to keep sick," you know, it, it binds people together. It creates this energy, and then you know it slowly pushes into us strength 
You know what I mean? And then there's maybe a God that just is there. And then when we die, but, it just why, brings us back would, to life. You know, that's why it. Would that's you, all it does. <laughs> why would you call it chaos, though? You know who Max Planck is, right? He's a deist. And I, I don't know why you would call it chaos just to get these laws. You going could even have a chaos way. God, like a not, you know, just a, a, a well, God. Why would you call it polytheism, chaos? though? And it just doesn't work because they're continuing. I don't know any of them. I don't know which God that could be. And I don't think anybody can really prove what kind of thing is behind our push or what kind well, of I, thing is behind that started us i think logically it has to be one of the three big monotheistic religions right either judaism christianity or islam because those are the only religions that actually um will say and believe in a god that is outside of time matter and space we know that the universe can't be eternal and a lot of these polytheistic uh, religions and gods for example especially like with the greeks you know their gods exist within the universe itself, um, which obviously is not scientifically. Don't accurate. you ever think it's, it's, it's the God of the Bible that tells us, um, you know, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So that implies a God that's outside of his creation. And that's why I believe that God uh, logically must be a personal God because um, this universe, time, matter and space had to have come from an outside source, which means God had to make a choice to bring forth this universe. So that's, uh, yeah. th that would indicate a personal God. But I think that's, th that's a God that's distinct from all of your, I mean, you could just rule out kind of like Matt said earlier, you can rule out all your Hindu gods. You can rule out your uh, deist type um, gods. You can rule out all yeah. your polytheistic yeah. gods. It only leaves you with, with your three. That's a similar, similar argument that John Polkinghorne gives. You guys know him. I do not know him. No. Yeah, he's yeah, physicist. So s similar argument. Hugh Ross puts forth the same argument. Right, and, uh, right. Yeah, but it's true. It's true. Can like I just you... test something out quickly? Can I just oh, test yeah. something out quickly? Can you guys hear me better now? Yes. A little bit. Yeah, you sound good. You sound good. Yeah, because I put my headphones. I just found my headphones for my S nine plus. <laughs> that'll. Where that'll make were it they better. the debate? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, I think it's. Oh. I think it's the scriptures right. that only it's it's only okay, the, sorry. it's only the Bible that gives us an explanation for the death, the decay, the chaos that we see in the world today, all based on the fall, all based on genetic entropy, as as Matt and I were were discussing. I mean, everything correlates perfectly with um, with, with Genesis, you know, the story of our beginning. So, Jack, do you believe in evil and good? Um, no, I mean, again, if you think about it, all right, you murder somebody, you know, it can be good. It can be bad. You know, well, let's say uh, a pedophile. I, 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 when I think of when I, when people talk about evil, I actually have an evil thing. I think I consider waste to be evil. Our species as a people, we have things that are find valuable, valuable to necessity to us to live or whatever the reason. And if you hoard those things and waste those things and get rid of those things, we find that perception more evil. So say that, you know, you have a, a little kid, we treasure little kids. And if somebody goes and kills a little kid, and obviously is going to really piss people off because it's extremely wasteful in every kind of imaginable way. Well, Hitler had the same Waste philosophy, changes. Though. So evil changes, you could say, because when things, when people don't see something as uh, bad anymore, they don't like, for example, someone's life. Or if you have a dictator or somebody that somebody decides to kill because they hate him, now his life's not valuable anymore. It's not as wasteful. So to Hitler kill him, throwing, so. <laughs> just to say Hitler threw 100,000 Jews in a. Fucking wasteful. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> in an oven and they burn into ashes. You're saying that's not an evil act? You're saying that's uh, that's just okay? That's for an a extremely man wasteful act. So so I would say that would be evil. Wasteful. That would be the most extremely evil thing. So that's just yeah, because like you're just wasting trash life. You're there. wasting. Yeah, such waste. That's the well, perfect example of the most evil thing you could probably do, or, or up yeah, there with evil. it, obviously. <laughs> so the Bible covers the existence. You just heard me. I said I wanted to. Uh, I wanted okay. our species to live and go through the cosmos and eat this planet up. I don't want any of us to die. Not a single one of us. I think we're but all you know, really, really useful. Right, but Darwinism wouldn't work that way. Even if we did colonize other planets, I'm sure plenty would die in the process. Yeah. 
Uh, Maybe we're going to die sitting here on this planet just for like people talk well, about course. climate control all the time. But if you thought about population, we are fucking screwed. I mean, if you don't, we don't do something about population eventually and become like Chinese and start making it rare to breed or or some more viruses happen or we go to war. Well, I think there's no way we like can continuously that. fit on this planet forever, at least unless we start getting a lot smarter or we start nah. getting off this planet. No, we'll never get off this planet. Yeah, uh, you can fit every single you can fit every single human being on Earth in in Loch Ness, like Ken Oven says, and he's right. Yeah, if you emptied Loch Ness and stacked every single person on top of each other, you could fit every single human being alive on Earth right now. All seven point five billion in Loch Ness. But you see, even in rats, even in all kinds the of the more people you slam together, the more likely you get disease and plague. So there right, could be true. all kinds of different problems that are going to continuously happen. You know, we're going to have a big city that gets an earthquake and more and more people die. And, you know, more people will die when any kind of hurricane goes through because now we got more people in that city. So it's just, uh, you know, well, it's going to be a lot of belief, death if we try to stay here. Die, we got to spread out. It doesn't matter where they go. It doesn't matter how horrible their lives are or how short and horrible they are and or how they die, if they go to the afterlife and they believe on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, then the simple fact is they'll go to a to a paradise forever and ever. Now, I'll send... What I'll is a, a paradise? Couple of, what would be a I'll, paradise I'll, to you or anyone? I'll, 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 I'll put... To, well, Earth is my paradise. Like this it, is it where I want to be. Well, it says, I don't it be says in the else. Bible that he's going to create a new <laughs> heaven and a new earth. And we'll all have incorruptible bodies, and we'll, like they'll be incorruptible forever, sin-free and incorruptible but also forever. Also, incorruptible existence as well. We mm -hmm. won't have the like what SFT was covering the degradation and everything being run down. The thermodynamics don't apply anymore. That will be perfect, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about. Like Adam was in the beginning, pristine. Before he sinned. Yeah. Right. So, in other words, Do you know when you have this perfect pe place. I'm sorry. I wasn't meaning oh, to no, interrupt okay, you. Okay. It's just he was talking, and I thought I had a minute there, but no, you're good. That's you can talk. I, I didn't want to interrupt you. Okay. I was saying, don't, don't you think every once in a while that, like, the, these good and bad things, there is no, I don't see a peace. I don't see a heaven. It, like, as I said, it's like, you know, this is my heaven, and it's good because it has its bad. It has its, it, it, there's a way to test yourself. You see, there's no reason to get good if you have no reason to do anything. You know, you won't test yourself. There's no challenge to it. And that's so right. that's kind of why the bad is there. It's to test your metal. It's to test your spirit, you could say. But now, that's if you go to this heaven place, I would just want to come back. Part of it. If there's a heaven place, that's, there's, there's probably no test to it because then what bad would be there? You know what I mean? That's why I don't, I don't get the whole heaven. If anything, I would want the reincarnation thing more than I would want a heaven. Well, I mean, heaven well, isn't <laughs> uh, gained by works, uh, so no one's merited to be in heaven. That's why it is heaven, because no one can be self-righteous. Oh, it's all done through the work of Jesus Christ. So um, think about that, too. It, and it's a free gift, man. Would you ever be willing to receive it? I mean, would you ever accept Jesus in any way whatsoever? What amount of evidence do you think would convince you? Oh, oh look, man. Just look uh, at the chat. Specifically, oh, Jesus, it, the I mean, section. he'd have to come down and like show some history lessons of him doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, hey, man, check out what I did. I am the real Jesus because it'd be hard now. Even if a even if a giant being came down, and it was like, hey, America, you know, the planet Earth, I am Jesus. Like, would you would you still you'd still be like, mm, I don't know, is he or is it some alien trying to pretend and, well, and that's, trick yeah, all you Christians? You see what I'm saying? You, you wouldn't even fucking know. But but I'm not. Listen, I mean this. What you guys believe in is good. You know what I mean? And like the, the, the thing about Jesus is he is a perfect icon. A perfect. I mean this because he's completely selfless. Selfless. Selfless is what I was trying to say. He lived every second he was trying to live to help people. He was trying to almost do the same thing I was telling you before, not saying like, but he cared about the humans more than anything else. You know, and as he say, he died for his sins. He died for everyone to have a second chance, you know, and he did it not caring about himself at all. And when people think I need to be like that guy, well, fuck, you're going to make a great world, 
right? Bingo. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Well, well, Jack, you're making a lot of sense here, man. You just need to convince Aaron Ra and all the other atheists. <laughs> man, I mean, you're you kind of answering. You're I've answering talked, a lot of your own questions, man. Yeah, you, I I've think, talked with yeah, a lot of are. these people, a lot of people about it. I was just kind of giving you a different perspective on it, but no, it, I, I'm going to get off of here, but I was enjoying talking to you guys. You guys oh, are definitely guys. smart people, but, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah I'll, I'll, try, I'll, I'll be watching you again. I subscribe to you. Huh? When this video goes up, I'm going to leave some stuff in the comment section. So have a look. Oh yeah, I definitely will. Okay. Mate. Good talking to you, Jack, man. You're, Good guy, nice brother. To you, Jack. Stay right. safe. Yep. Be careful. Yeah. God bless you, man. Have a God good bless day. Jack. Good night, I mean. Later, Jack. Yep. You too. All right, brother. See you, mate. See ya. So the two big guns are gone, so. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, Thanks, guys. The truth in that. Too. We need Tony <laughs> here, too, man. That's good. You're crazy, Yeah, that's Tony. right. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I got to talk to Luca. That was cool, man. Yeah. He's a yeah, I'm glad we got to give him right. those uh, links. He said he got those links that I that I gave him, so that's cool. All right, I've been sending. I basically that wrote out word for word everything James Tua said. I wrote it yeah. out from his video, word for word. Yeah. And I also wrote out word for word everything um, Stephen Meyer said about the yeah. protein and how to build a protein by random chance. I wrote it word for word everything. So lots of yeah. stuff like that that I gave him about the beginning and. And, and the universe and showing him that, the, you know, they, 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 they just, what they believe is absolutely crazy. It, they call us crazy. It makes me angry. Yeah. Well, yeah. They've never shown proteins anywhere. Are you guys familiar with Aaron Dan Dembski? Oh, yeah. He's good. And Doug Axe. Doug Axe. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> if people look this up, it's called complex specif specific or specified information inside the cell. Yep. Uh, so yep. I, that's the one that did the mathematical equation for Stephen right. Meyer with Douglas and It puzzles yeah. me how they think that simple information you can get from chemicals and then go into CSI that that that, that, that doesn't that doesn't compute that that's not even logical. Yeah. Oh. They're 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 just going to push it to somewhere else where they think it can happen. That's all they're going to do. At, yeah. At best, it would be Shannon's information, and I mean that's like um, scrambled information. It's not specific. So no, they're specified. They're dead. Yeah, <laughs> they're dead in the water, and just like yeah. just like the abiogenesis, it's dead in the water. Yeah. 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 It's ridiculous. It's all you're never you're never you're never going to get sequenced information to arise through unguided natural prebiotic chemistry. No, it's only ever going to break down. And go yeah. backwards. Hydrolysis, just, everything it disperses. It's the abiogenesis is filled with more problems than progress. It is. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And then also Neff, I don't know if he, he if he's seen some of his stuff, but he showed he has a paper, an actual paper that says that uh, information inside the cell is prescriptive. Yeah. yeah. So it even prescribes yeah. what to do. Like that is that goes yep. in the realm of ontology. That's metaphysics. Self repairing. Yes. Well, it's uh, multi-layered. It's multi-layered. That's four-dimensional. The genome. So, yeah. trying to get something four-dimensional out of a. Uh, you guys, let, let me know what you want to do. I can come back with Foz Rana. I mean, I know he's uh, he did email me, and he's the uh, biochemist. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd oh, like I to see him Foz. again. With, yeah, he's great. He's yeah, I'd like to see him debate somebody. Yeah, he took on Aaron Rod. Aaron, to. Yeah, he took on Aaron Rod. He just went, he had no answers for the problems with the RNA world. He just said, uh, well, I read a few papers on RNA, but I just stick with evolution. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he'll just say it hasn't been answered yet. Yeah. Science will find yeah. out someday. It, science it'll science going to, yeah, there, yeah. So just push it to another planet and keep it hidden somewhere, <laughs> and it just happened. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that'll all fit in there. I don't think so. You know, if we said it's, it's that though about God, eh, just, that, just leave go. that away right. about God. We'll we'll figure that out another day. I mean, they would, yeah, they would demonize they would, us and uh, you know, villainize yeah. us. But I, I would say abiogenesis hides abiogenesis hides the same way God does. You know, right? Yeah. So it's divine hiddenness for uh, Christians, and would be uh, some. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's something hidden this with uh, your, your cell from abiogenesis. Exactly. All right, guys. Give them another. Give, just give them another ten thousand years. You know they're gonna figure it out. Yeah, because science <laughs> no. science is pretty dang good. The scientific method is gonna do it. It's, it'll conquer the right. world. Yeah. Current we rate of genomic we, we, decay where we'll be gone in in one thousand to fifteen hundred years. Right. We'll be finished. All life on Earth will be extinct. Human life will be extinct. Yeah. Within one thousand years, if it keeps going the way it's going, which it obviously is. Then we're we're going we're heading towards extinction. Jesus Christ will come back a long time before that. Amen. Yeah, it's pretty. I a mean, long time I, that. I, I, we always. I mean, the, the thing is, too, like it's most philosophers, science. I mean, some lot of scientists and physicians understand humans are spiritual, and we're not just uh, program robots and uh, just like or playing to the tune of chemicals and atoms bumping into each other. There's more to life. There's right. it gets way more in depth than that. We were we're complex. Uh, we're introspective creatures. We have morality. We have reason, intelligence, and the, none of that stuff is addressed through any physical material process. Yeah, they're having a hard time explaining consciousness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, even Lee, what did Lee Cronin say about consciousness? He said he doesn't even believe it exists or something ridiculous. It's like just I posted denial. it in that. Yeah, yeah. you got to watch that debate with James Tor where he just admits I did. he doesn't know. Oh, okay. Well, I yeah. watched it from beginning to end. Oh, man. It was that funny. Was something. Yeah, Hilarious. just pure arrogance. Pure arrogance, man. Yeah. He doesn't pure know idiot. what life is. Yeah. Fool. He doesn't know what life is. Fool. Yeah. Life, life isn't know. designed. Life isn't designed, but he's going to design it in his state-of-the-art designed laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a laugh. What a joke. It's what really, a joke. It's find really out. just a, uh, a religion, atheism. Because you think about it, 97% of the world is uh, spiritual or some, in some, some uh, form fa you know, or fashion. Uh, so you have this real small, minute population that uh, is atheistic. And then like, I think that, that that's their own philosophy. Like we're just like Darwinian, like the Darwinian type of Alec. Like we're just an, molecules in motion and animals competing with each other. I mean, that's what we're reduced to with atheists. So um, yeah. it's it's the battle of philosophy. This is what the Bible talks about. And, and to not be deceived by vain philosophy and uh, belief systems out there. So. It's called, yeah, I, yeah. I think Christianity is far, far superior than the other philosophy or worldview out there. Yeah, they don't agree, of course, but. I'm really sad I didn't work out this this microphone before the debate began. <laughs> yeah. And and my thing and my, uh, that I can turn my camera off like that and get my picture to come up like that. That would have been much better. Oh, well. Yeah. We can hear you good. If you guys want me back, let me know, man. I mean, uh, I had a good time. Yeah, we want you back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bloody really good stuff. Yeah, I like that origin yeah, of life stuff. Yeah, if she you could bring that. I love man. listening to chemists. I love to listen to two chemists, an atheist, uh, sorry, an evolutionist chemist, biochemist, and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, you know, and a creationist biochemist go at it. I love yeah. it. I just love yeah. it. We need you and T-Joe to, to go in the ring together. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just he wouldn't agree, and he would just say that it could still happen somewhere. Same type of denial. Yeah, he would tell you this is yeah. the testable hypothesis, and then he, he would say he actually. <laughs> well, I sent I, yeah, I sent in a question the other day, and I I said that yeah, none of this stuff can happen under prebiotic chemistry, and he says, oh, it doesn't have to. I, I saw where where would abiogenesis happen? Again, it always <laughs> hides. It always hides somewhere where they never have to show it. <laughs> Yeah, it's hilarious. Idiots. Unbelievable. It's always in some, yeah, they, they, if you can't get started, just a simple protein. A simple protein, there's there's 10 to the 80th or 90th power um, atoms in the universe, and it takes just to form one protein, I think. How long was it that, that he said? I think it was 140 amino acids long. 
Yeah. It's uh, and that's it's, a small it's, one. It's, it's, yeah, and that's a small one. There's, they go trillion, up to like forty, thirty-eight thousand. <laughs> right. Thirty-eight thousand, I think, is the largest um, protein, and or forty thousand, or fifty thousand, or whatever it is. It's a lot, but but the average one's about four hundred amino acids long, and he's picking one out. I think it's about one hundred and sixty amino acids, or one hundred and forty, or whatever it is. And uh, it takes one with one hundred one one with one hundred and sixty zeros after it, and 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 <laughs> that's more. That's double. Yeah. That's double the. That takes that's as many tries as double the amount of atoms in the in the known universe. Right. <laughs> Adam. And and there's millions of atoms in the head of a pin. Yeah. And we're <laughs> and we're delusional. And we're delusional. Yeah. And we're delusional. And right. and when when we and when they don't have faith, they believe in, in actual science and, and we believe in uh, uh, a, a fairy in the sky or some rubbish like that. Right. A yeah, fairy tale, fairy. yeah. You're just a bunch of goat. I believe in ancient goat herders that wrote up a bunch of stuff. Oh well, yeah, they, no way. They believe in magic without the magician. <laughs> yeah, that's even yep. more absurd. Yeah, they know there has to be a beginning. They know, of course, you've got the big crunch theory where it all comes back together and then goes back out again, but that still doesn't explain where it all came from in the first place. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how many universes you've got, you've still got the same laws in each universe, so it's not going to help you no matter how many you've got. Even if you had an infinite number of universes, the, you literally would need an infinite number, literally. Not, infinite. Not yeah. infinite. In, to, 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 for... For life to happen um, uh, by chance, from by pure random chance, through chemicals washed out of rocks and blah, blah, all that sort of stuff, you need literally to have an infinite amount of universes. Um, so that means basically that the universe is infinite and there's, there's just an infinite amount of universes and we just happen to be the lucky one where it happened in. Okay. And that's where that's... That's how desperate they're getting, but saying still, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, but that, e that doesn't even get you to the laws of logic. Laws of logic, I don't know if people know this, they're immaterial. Um, well, 50,000, 50, yeah. what is it? One with 50,000 zeros after it. Any, any number higher than that is considered, and one, one, any chance, one chance in one, one with 50,000 zeros after it is the maximum law of probability. Any higher than, than, than that with 50,000 zeros after it is considered to be absolutely and completely impossible. So if you go to 51,000 zeros, one chance in 51,000 zeros, impossible. Yeah. Impossible. Right. So, but I'm saying yeah. there's things that transcend the universe anyway. Like the laws of logic, they're immutable, uh, they're immaterial, and they, um, yeah, I mean, so they don't change, the, but they're also uh, not not subject to uh, space. They're, so there's space, they're not contingent on space. So what would, you know, well, you've got for millions. That? <laughs> Going back to the amino acids, you've got you've got over a hundred amino acids in nature. Only twenty of them are used in life, and they're the left-handed yeah. ones. And amino acids are naturally left and right-handed. They've in, and when each amino acid joins, it's got a peptide, and each peptide is a right and left-handed a pep peptide. So they need a right-handed peptide with a left-handed amino acid, and and they have to just magically bump into each other at the right times in the right places, and just all form and come. And this is just one protein. And I mean, then you have to do that. You have to you do that out one hundred and forty different times, and 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 if one protein is out of place in that sequence, just one sorry, one amino acid is out of place in that in that protein in that sequence, it'll just fall apart and and be destroyed instantly. Not to mention you've got water. Water's the universal solvent, and it can't happen in water because water would just dissolve dissolves proteins. And it's just there's just so many many problems like what I explained to Luca with the carbohydrates and everything it just it can't happen it just can't happen if you Steven have that much Meyer trouble too. that's why they go to the rna virus that's why they always go to oh well it must have been an rna virus that was first because they're so simple but that doesn't work either because the rna virus needs a host and how did they you know it's just a just they're, they're just they're lost well they like to they like to keep saying it's it's science and they keep using that word but it's not science and then, well, they say it is, and it's a hypothesis. But no, yeah. No, but that's... isn't there the nucleotide lock? I don't know if you guys know, Stephen Meyer kind of does some good stuff on this, too. And he says they have to find the right combination. Um, if you had, a, let's say, a bicycle lock with a combination, it would be like a mile long or something. <laughs> so they even have to find the combination to that or something. It's crazy. Yeah. No, you'd have to have a bicycle lock, I think. 
with um, t- 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 twenty thousand numbers on each right, wheel, yeah. and the and 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 something like billions of wheels, or something <laughs> like that. Or 20, 20 numbers. Sorry, twenty numbers on each wheel, uh, with 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 hundreds and hundreds of wheels or millions of wheels or hundreds of got- tens of thousands of wheels. How are you going to do that? How are you going to roll those numbers and get that to all line up for just by random chance, just by wind and rain and water and in just, it's so impossible. It's, it's just not funny. Pick up a rock, pick up a pebble off the ground. That's impossible. That matter. Looks like, uh, Jason. We lost you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we can go all day on this, though. So I think it's like three... Yeah, man. We'll wrap it up, I guess. I'll get some sleep. Yeah, it's like three <laughs> here in the morning. Sorry. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, it's... it's uh, it's uh, What time is it? It's 20 minutes past nine. Oh, sorry, 20 <laughs> yeah. minutes past seven. If, seven. You, uh, if you guys want to get... at Luke, p.m. Yeah, it's four here. If you guys want to get Luca back one day, I'll get more prepared. I'll get some of these papers that I had. I didn't have anything good, you know, I, I really. Said cool. Luca okay. said that he wanted to bring one of his chemist friends because he wasn't very good at, at, at talking. So he oh, wanted okay. to bring one of his chemist friends to debate. I mean, I know you're, you're – I mean, I could destroy his chemist friend, and I, yeah. and I know nothing. You know, yeah. so I know your biochemist friend is just going to – make a mockery out of him i'd love to see that man i want yeah. to be there right. <laughs> i want to see yeah, it we need to set up that debate right. on sft i'd love to watch that i'd be that'd be something i'd be joyful yeah oh that would be awesome that would be a fun one all right well, let guys. me know guys so we're gonna yeah i'm gonna get some rest yeah i'm gonna shut this Thank down you. All right. Everyone, all right. see you mate god bless you god bless, god bless. good night guys good night man not right. Tony. So we're going to shut yeah, this down. Yeah. Everyone in the chat, yeah. we appreciate you coming on in on SFT. It was a good chat tonight. We got into the Albio yeah. Genesis, though. It was, I'm uh, sorry about all the problems. Oh, no. I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry, man. It won't happen again now that I've worked out this microphone. And, and I've worked out a few. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's all good. Um, so we're gonna all right, guys. See you yeah. soon. Yeah, Have a good night. See you, Later. Mate. All right. See ya. Later. <laughs> see ya. Good night, everyone in the chat. See ya. God bless.